Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to enjoy the following broadcast of live wrestling action. Tonight, for your viewing pleasure, we have Brutus the Barbarian and Wolf Anderson settling their score. The Olympia Legends challenging the Cooper Screw for the top tag team titles. Kathy Gardner going up one on one against Amaya Grace for the Grand Prix title. The Masked Warrior encountering the Demon King in Hell in a Cell match. And finally, PewDiePie Cook defending his position as the Brawl Masters season champion. Coming to you from Helsinki, Finland, I am your host Kupari Parta, and this is Brawl Masters Breakthrough. One more time, good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the season 4 finale of the Brawl Masters, our final premium show here. And about, we are going to get a very explosive start into it, as we are kicking, uh, about to kick off the first match here, Brutus the Barbarian the about to make his way to the ring here. Honestly, I couldn't imagine a better pair to be uh, starting us off and pushing us into the breakthrough here. Brutus the Barbarian, the first brawler to enter. Right after him is gonna come out Wolf Anderson, who'll be settling their score in the ring tonight. For the last few weeks there, there's been a bit of a heat going on be between the two. Wolf losing two matches to Brutus the Barbarian. One to a technicality due to the referee not, not noticing the rope break, but the other one he lost. Well, it was some good save, fair and square, others could debate that. In uh, any way, uh, this, this is the night, this is the moment, this is the place where things will be settled tonight. And with the uh, sound, you can already, uh, with the music started, you can already tell that the Viking warrior has arrived. Weighing in at 223 pounds, Wolf Anderson. Yeah, as I said, the situation is 2 and 0 oh for the uh, advantage of Brutus the Barbarian, but I suppose it doesn't matter for Wolf, as long as he's able to get a victory here in the premium show, that's all that matters. I mean, at least that way he can return to Valhalla with his head held high. Answer. The live audience here is definitely on the side of Wolf, and it's uh, a good portion of them are showing their appreciation. But yeah, it, 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 this is not a popularity contest. This is a fight, and this is going to be one of the more brutal fights. Know that about it. Well, we still have plenty of brutality waiting, waiting to come around. But nonetheless, here we go, starting off, kicking off the first match in the, in here, the our final premium show, the breakthrough event. Wolf Anderson looking up the legs, gonna be oh rolling leg leg snap, Tra trapping the other leg around. Now it looks like the Viking Warrior is gonna be becoming the Flying Warrior instead, or the Flying Viking at that. Oh, gets countered. Brutus the Barbarian going for the slam, and now just try to keep Wolf down. And yeah, that's that's that uh, that's just the disrespect we have come to know and expect from Brutus in these matches. Speaking of big, big disrespect, Wolf just sending him outside now. Gotta be looking for a disqualification this early on in the match here. Pretty sure there's plenty of, plenty of much Wolf wants to get done here to the Barbarian. Barbarian Brutus, however, wants to finish this match off and finish Wolf off permanently off so he won't be coming around fighting him anymore 
we, we will see what, what will come as Wolf now on the top clubbing the forearm across the face and the shoulder drops down the knee and stomps right onto the arm there lining up knee to the face not done yet goes for yet another one picks up Frutus for one more round picks up the wall of the Brutus here going for strikes multiple strikes trying to keep him locked up solid German suplex technique very well displayed here and Wolf with his agile figure definitely able to go for that kind of a maneuver meanwhile Wolf uh, Brutus rely more on power smashing the head against the shoulders there or to the upper back lifting up goes for the northern lights Wolf Anderson turning things around quite literally rolls up and goes for the neck breaker hooks up the leg and going for the cover here we have one count we have two count and Wolf looking to end it but Brutus not about to let it happen not about to let Wolf get the victory that easily preying on his opponent now Wolf Anderson in the corner ready for this moment to come rushing goes for the spear and into the cover here we have one we have two count a referee a bit slow on the count they're not gonna lie definitely slowing down a bit the uh, count there I don't I don't know for what reason well Brutus is a very menacing man I suppose the fear of what just might happen uh, to, to the man up on the backstage gonna gonna be gonna have to w worry about that I suppose very some security staff you know Wolf with a kick able to get back up to his feet now goes for more clubbing forearms straight to the face multiple strikes here and striking the shoulder as well just pummeling away at his opponent and yet dropping up another knee to the back yeah Wolf is really just dictating the this entire match up here oh able to duck out of the way lifting up look at this exploder suplex Picks up the leg, going for uh, once again the knees straight to the head. Another one, a uh, one more for good measure. Yeah, Wolf Anderson just fully in control of the match here. Dives in with the elbow. Brutus able to roll out of the way. Catching hold and locks up Wolf into a power bomb position. Gonna go for that brutal power bomb combo. Here's the first one. Here's the second one. And <laughs> give it, give it, Wolf. One more for the good measure. See, he still needs to make three more to uh, go up for the knees that Wolf has given him. Lifting up, gonna go for that Dominator that Wolf lost to previously. Now he's able to escape that. Uh, no, it wasn't Wolf. It was who was Brutus fighting the last time? Small back at Striver. And Wolf now going for the cover. There we go for the one. We have two count. Only a two count. Wolf able to expertly turn the momentum against Brutus the Barbarian and looking to finish this off with one more spear. Takes down Brutus in the center of the ring. Referee in position. We have one. We have two. Once again, the slow count. Really a slow count, but that doesn't matter to Wolf Anderson. He's able to secure a victory here in our opening match for the breakthrough. A huge, huge victory for the Viking Warrior tonight. Absolutely a fantastic. <laughs> Brutus undoubtedly is not happy about it one bit. But nonetheless, the results don't lie. Wolf has come back and he has proven to Brutus that he cannot be taken down. Yeah, what, a, what an amazing opener to our show here tonight. Let's move on to the next match, shall we? Coming up next, we have a one-on-one -on -one beatbox match. And this is for the men's Martial Arts Championship title. We have both the previous champion, Marshall David and Green Cyclone, about to go head-to-head -head one more time to determine which one of them will be the undisputed men's martial arts champion. 
which one of them will be surviving the beatbox, we will find out right now. The following contest is a steel cage match and is for the Men's Martial Arts Championship. You heard it first and true here, folks. We are bringing back our most beloved, or one of our most beloved original ho household rules here, the beatbox. Of course, they, this beatbox has gone through a few variations uh, in this iteration. Uh, previously, the only way to win this match was either by a knockout or by a submission. Well, submission victory is no longer allowed. This is a fight until a knockout. Of course, the beatbox is going to be locked in, so there's no exiting the ring and no ex exiting the box. Climbing out of it will, will result in a disqualification, but I doubt either of these men would, would be interested in that. Both of them want the title and both of them want to prove themselves to be the undisputed men's martial arts champion. That's right, our two top brawlers uh, in, the, in the division right now, Marshall David, the previous champion, and the defending champion Green Cyclone. One of them will be walking home tonight with their undisputed title on their back. And that's gonna, uh, that's gonna say, uh, be a huge statement victory either way around, whether it's the season one veteran or the prominent martial artist and now our martial arts champion, the Green Cyclone. Of course, as the defending champion, he was the one to choose the beatbox rules, and I'm really glad that he he brought it back. He brought the very, very well beloved house rules back. A victory will definitely assure here a top position for either of these brawlers. The green Cyclone style, styling with a very nice new hat. You know, you can, you can say whatever whatever you want but about, about the brawlers, but at least they don't skip out on uh, hat wear. When, at least when they decide so. Head wear, that's what I meant to say, head wear. Yeah, very stylish. Ma making it look real cool. And here it is, one more time, the Martial Arts Championship title. And one more time, we have the both the previous champion, now the challenger. Introducing the challenger from Authority Megacorp headquarters, weighing in at 194 pounds, Marshawn David. The master of the sleeper hold. And introducing the champion from the Shang Dynasty, weighing in at 156 pounds. He is the men's martial arts champion. I'm shaking his Green booty. Cyclone. All right, let's see. Huge title opportunity either way around. Whether the challenger or the champion will come out on top of this, it will be absolutely a huge statement victory. As there will be no doubt about it. Well, no doubt about it. It is going to be. 100% guaranteed that they are gonna be the undisputed champion of the martial arts division for the men. Beatbox being locked in here and here we go. The bell has rung and the fight is on. Now once again, no pinfalls, no submissions, no disqualifications other than if you escape the beatbox. But uh, other than that, everything is allowed within the confines of the box here. The only way to win this match is by knocking out your opponent, so gonna be real interesting to see which one will get the job done. Is it gonna be the Cyclone Pile Driver, or is it gonna be the Sleeper Hold, the Green Cyclone, the defending champion, already going for huge maneuver, going for the top rope moonsault, drops down knee to the arm of the challenger Marshall, Marshall David, season one veteran brawler, has been multiple time championship title holder so far in the series, Green Cyclone, has had, I believe this is his second overall title that he's currently holding on to, or was this the first one? No, he's hold, hold on to gold previously. Yeah, this is his second title. The first one was during the third season, the Junior Fighting Championship title. But now, sta standing as a martial arts champion, 
This is exactly where he wanted to pick a go. Leg drop from the top rope. Marshall David dropping, dropping down heavy impact right onto the champion. Picking him up and going to work. Alternating elbows, slap to the face there. Fiend Cyclo able to catch the hand and go for the kick. Ducks out of the way and locks up the head. Scissors gonna spin around. And Marshall David got taken down. Coming around for another head scissor spin takedown. It's a fist, it's effective and definitely taking advantage of that athletic and nimble figure of Green Cyclo. Gonna be setting up now a single like camel clutch here. Very reminiscent to, to the submission fight where Green Cyclo was able to get the martial arts title. That being a submission fight as, as per the rule, ruling chose by, made by Marshall David, of course, as the submission master, the sleeper hold master. Not gonna go for the sleeper hold, instead gonna go for a electric chair driver, the execution. Dropping down the champion. Not enough to knock him out. Perfect opportunity would have been going to go for a pinfall or a submission in this case. Locks up the sleeper hold. We could get a knockout victory right here if he's able to uh, cut him off for just long enough. Green Cyclone fading. No, not fading. Gonna quick thinking there, allowing him to escape. Jawbreaker, and now gonna come in wheelbarrow into a bulldog. Well, Marshall David already unleashing two of his most potent signature maneuvers. He's been busted open with a spin kick to the face. Green Cyclone on the top rope. Dives in with the frog splash. Uh, if it's gonna be any indication that the champion is in a very good position to retain here. Sending. Oh, missing the timing on that one. Could have gone for a hurricane runner, but a bit too early on that count. Goes for the neck breaker, jumping neck breaker at that, and now looking to finish off Marshall David. We could have got a knockout right here and now. Looking up there. Oh, never mind. Marshall David able to outmaneuver Green Cyclone that goes for the Sunset Flip Power Bomb. Really impressive from a man of that size against a man of Green Cyclone size. But hey, <laughs> this is Pro Masters. Anything can happen here. Setting up yet another sleeper hold. And that's it. The defending champion Green Cyclone got knocked out by the sleeper hold. And we have once more. The Martial Arts Champion title changing hands here and with that Marshall David becoming the undisputed Martial Arts Champion of Season 4. Green Cyclo definitely had it going, but the, yeah, this is where this is the exact moment where everything fell apart. Here is your winner and new men's martial arts champion, Marshall David. Green Cyclones reign was not long lived. That means to tell that there's still plenty of training for him to do to become a true master of the martial arts. Nonetheless, Marshall David gets to enjoy his time in the spotlight here. Well done. Next up, we're gonna be getting a huge tag team match. We have a tornado tag team match for the men's. Wrestling Alliance Championship titles. The challengers, the number one contenders who have proven themselves better than every other team signing up for this title. We have the Olympian legends, Punk Hercules and uh, the strongman Partacus. And of course, defeating the titles tonight is the Cooper Screw, led by Captain Cooper himself. And joining him is Outlaw Casey. Here they come. The strong man. The punk. There we have the Olympia legends. The challengers for the men's wrestling alliance championship title. Very interesting to see whether or not these two can actually pull up, but they've been having a very solid teamwork. Coming <laughs> coming up together, coming up together as this team. 
these two Greek athletes definitely showcasing to the entire men's roster how, how to be a true tag team, how to become unconquered in pursuit of true glory. This of course would be if Particles is able to, I mean if the Olympian legends are able to get the victory, this will be Particles' first ever championship title. Van Hercules of course has, is a previous, previous title holder, a previous junior fighting champion twice. But Particles is still yet to earn any gold, despite being a season one veteran. Let's see whether that's not gonna be chasing us. The duo is going to go up against another pair of season one veterans. We have Captain Cooper and Outlaw Casey, your res men's Wrestling Alliance champions, having defeated the Riffle and Blues team for those titles, and now looking real excited for this opportunity to this matchup. There are plenty of history between uh, competitive history between these teams and uh, no, no, not in sets of teams, but in singles competition, these all, all four people are quite familiar with how one another fights. So gonna be real excited to see which one of them will be coming on top tonight. The Olympia Legends definitely have prepared themselves for just this opportunity, but. The Cooper screw, definitely not people you can count out. They, they have been also preparing for this match, be, keeping a real close eye on the competition. It, it, I suppose it all comes down to, well, it's a tornado tag team match, so it comes down to whichever team has the be better team play going on tonight. And here we have the challengers. Once again, Punk Hercules and Particus, very dominating duo, and speaking of dominating duos, Cooper's crew, Captain Cooper and Outlaw KC. Of course, because this is a tornado tag team match, the rest of the Cooper's crew could be out here, to, uh, out here tonight on the ringside, but not to worry, they, they have a match coming up later on in the show as they're go gonna go for the women's wrestling alliance titles. So we could potentially be looking at double gold here, but let's see if Bell has rung and the fight is on. Tornado Tag Team Rules match, fun fall the, uh, in effect. Pin your opponent or make them submit and you earn the titles for yourself and your team. As we have here. The Olympia Legends they, taking a lead in this competition well so far. Pretty even, no the champions getting the control back to their side. Yeah, it's always, always a hectic uh, start up there. Swinging neck breaker by Punk Hercules. Come on, come down. Springboard drop kick to the back of the head of Outlaw K. See me while we have Captain Cooper working uh, working on Particus coming in. Dub double hack sandal from the top. Particus retaliating with a jaw breaker. Catching hold and trying to set up Captain Cooper in the corner here. Oh, gets the elbow to the face after that. Um, Casey able to go for a backbreaker, turn things around. Captain Cooper lifting up the challenger. Particus, double-handed choke bomb toss. Gets tossed off with the legs. Particus back up to his feet. So is Punk Hercules. Casey just running at him and gets caught up. Tracked around as Punk Hercules is trying to set him up, but taking way too long, walking way too far away. To, to reach his destination. Instead, Outlaw Casey is going to be dictating what's going to be happening in the corner here. Pushes him down and now going to lift him back up to his feet. Oh, Punk, Punk Hercules retaliating, pushing off Casey, lifting him up. Spinning slam. The Olympia Legends starting to take control here. The crowd is not that much liking it. They, they, they seem to be on the side of the champions for tonight, unfortunately for them. The champions are getting getting their backs handed to Ben. Beautiful slam there by Bardacus. Very powerful maneuver and speaking of powerful maneuvers, Ali Oop. Oh, gets the kick counter. Casey getting back up to his feet. So is Captain Cooper catching hold. Looks up Bardacus. Lifts him up. Goes for a suplex. Delivering the vertical and goes for the cover. Very cocky pin here. Kinda imitating Bardacus with that pose, you know. Talk about disrespect or how to. Well, not necessarily disrespect, but they're talking about Flair and now looking up. Captain Zook here. Submission hold being applied here. Bardo's kicking at the rope, but the referee not caring one bit at that. Instead, 
get it back up to his feet, realizing that he has to make his own way out of that and manages to do that with a couple of elbows. Oh, Captain Cooper sidestepping out of the way and German suplexes the powerhouse. The strongman himself. Punk Hercules just got busted open by Outlaw Casey, who's now striking him. Constant right hook straight to the face. Particles ejecting the captain out of the ring. They're taking this fight on the ringside. Gonna lock up an arm bar and leg, uh, leg lock as well, I think. Yeah, he has the leg trap as well, yeah. Unfortunately for him, the match cannot end in a submission on the ringside, nor in a pinfall. Casey coming in to rescue his captain gets caught by Captain Cooper, but now we have a two-on-one situation as Cooper's crew definitely showcasing what the Wrestling Alliance is all about. Well, not about overpower... Well, basically overpowering your opponent. You gotta take the opportunity, go for your partner when, when, when the goal needs to. Outlaw Casey now, Moonlight Drive. In the center of the ring, well not in the center, pretty close to the ropes, but not less, hooks up the leg. We have two count and shoulder up, Punk Hercules gets the shoulder up. Not about to let this match go to waste, not about to let this opportunity go to waste. Still trying to fight and still trying to take down Outlaw Casey for the titles, for the Wrestling Alliance Championship titles. Cool, cool Captain Cooper goes for the Muscle Buster against Bardicus. I don't think we've ever seen Muscle Buster actually in Pro Masters. Really interesting, definitely really interesting. Setting up here, Flatliner. STO Flatliner at that. Setting up here, another big move. Gonna go for one night stand. Outlaw Casey speciality. Rolls up, hooks up the leg. Casey going for the cover. Bardicus rushes into the ring. No. Kicks out, Blank Hercules kicking out of that. Casey looking for a one more moonlight drive, and there he goes. Punk Hercules planted, and it's gonna be game over at this point. We have one, we have two count, and we have a three. Cooper's crew retaining their championship titles against the Olympia legends. There's a quick shot at the replays here of the action you just witnessed. Plenty of high power maneuvers. Plenty could have gone either way around, but unfortunately, well, unfortunately for the challengers, the Olympia legends. Here are your winners and still the men's wrestling alliance champions, the crew. Yeah, unfortunately for the challengers. Cooper's crew tonight ha just had better tag team play, uh, better team play, better alliance setting for, for themselves. Olympia Legends focusing too much on, uh, on their own opponents, could not focus up on taking down the unified duo. Next one on the line is gonna be the men's internet championship title. And this is once again for the undisputed men's internet championship. We have a pretty equal situation, I think. Actually, think it is equal. Yes, it is indeed. Both Henry Louis Marceau and Jackie Jackson with nine victory points in the season so far. Whoever wins this match is gonna be undisputed internet champion in the men's division. So let's see. Uh, as per the champion's advantage here in the Pro Masters, the champion has chosen once again a last man standing match. The following contest is a last man standing match and is for the Men's Internet Championship. Here comes the original queen, season one veteran brawler Jackie Jackson. Absolutely glorious and absolutely a glorious opportunity for him, noted about that. Men's internet championship title on the line here, undisputed at that. As both Jackie Jackson and the defending champion Henry Louis Marceau standing at the top of the division. One of them, just like with the previous match, 
we have in the men's martial arts division. The winner here tonight will be walking home with a huge, huge title on his own I and mean, a huge victory at that. Gonna be cementing them, themselves into the Pro Masters history as the undisputed season 4 men's internet champion. Of course, it's mostly thanks to Jackie Jackson that this opportunity even came through that the internet championship that will be coming such a huge deal here. So already that deserves an applause by itself. But let's see whether or not he can get back. But he started here. As we have the defending champion about to enter the ring here. The Disco Warrior and the men's internet champion Henry Louis Marceau. Unrivaled in style and fashion. This man definitely knows how to how to make a, a, a appearance. And definitely knows how, how to make a stylish a, a entrance and finish. After all, last man standing match definitely gonna be <laughs> uh, Mar uh, Henry is gonna be relying on that. No sweat, uh, no no trouble attitude of his. Maybe he's hoping that he'll, he'll outstand his opponent with just his damn smooth. But let's see. Well, that could potentially happen there. Disco Warriors legs with leg drop combo definitely has taken out plenty of people before. Let's see if it's enough to take down the Queen. Introducing the challenger from the Queen City, weighing in at 274 pounds, Jackie Jackson. Glorious, just absolutely glorious. And introducing the champion from the nearest nightclub. Weighing in at 206 pounds, he is the men's internet champion, Henry Louis Marshall. There's no doubts about it. No matter who wins this title, the after party is gonna be huge. As uh, I'm pretty friendly sure that both of these men are down for partying. Maybe one more so than the other, but nonetheless, it's gonna be huge for the winning team and uh, for the people who happen to support them. So you know, okay, better get your ticket ready or whatever, wherever. Better, better be uh, take a close eyes on wherever these two men might end up as we kick off the match here. Men's Internet Championship title on the line here. Henry Louis Marceau, the defending champion, able to get the advantage going first. Drops down the queen with a drop kick and now drop, uh, dropping down the kick to the chest there. Coming in, rolling neck snap. Picks the legs here. Oh, gets tossed off. Jackie Jackson back up to his feet. Picking and clubbing down the champion, setting him up for a hip drop. Picks him up again and Henry take it down the queen. Drops the knee to the back of the well to the back. To the back of the back. Actually, does the back have a front? That's a, that's an inter, interesting conundrum there, no, no, nonetheless. The fight continues on. Jackie Jackson on top now. Oh, gets kicked down. Yeah, we're going reversal for reversal. Very even sided competition going on right now, and that's exactly what I love to see. Another reversal. No, none of them really able to get a good hold on, on the situation. Neither of them able to get, make a lot of headway here. Jackie about to turn that around, goes for the climbs to the top rope and dives in with the elbow. Yeah, that definitely put the control to Jackie's corner here, going for him now. Punts it straight to the face. Trying to break open that face of the Disco Warrior, or at least co cause a bit of a bit of headache in that. An utter kick and takes down chop block, coming around, lifting up atomic drop, inverted atomic drop at that, and 
scoop slam slamming down the queen Henry able to turn things around very efficiently and the referee starting the count now let's see whether or not that was enough that was definitely a solid combination definitely a solid com comeback we are up to a five count and Jackie is still down for the six count for the seven count he's down he's still down up to an eight count Henry preparing for a victory nine count that was huge leg sweep and here comes the disco warriors leg drop all right my previous one was a nine count so pretty pretty obvious that this one is gonna get get into a ten count at this point but let's see whether or not Jack, Jackie can able to is able to beat the odds here no Henry breaks the count he wants to keep the fight going this is exactly the type of hoop hubris he had last time he defended the match uh, defended the title and it can definitely come back to bite him especially against an opponent like Jackie Jackson who has managed to make a comeback of his own choking the champion against the top rope trying to get the champion lifted up here oh elbow to the back and Henry is back on down to his feet clubbed another elbow to the back and clubbed to the back as well goes for a kick to the leg and here comes the last shot it might have been the last shot of the match but not necessarily the last shot of the night if you know what I mean Henry about to party down hard he almost kicked Jackie to the hand there but did it actually connect so the referee not stopping the count here yeah Henry is looking for a fight let's see whether or not uh, Jackie has any fight left in him as we have a seven count now up to eight and he gets back up to his feet or trying to get back up but Henry puts a stop to those thoughts kick to the back stomp to the arm and gonna be looking for a submission maneuver here a cross face locked in here trying to make the queen submit of course that's not gonna be ending the match but it will definitely be a solid way to deal up great amount of damage and wear well it seemed like queen was going anywhere right or way around so let's see <laughs> let's see whether or not that was enough Jackie is down this is of course an excellent opportunity for him to rest up or wait an opportunity for Henry to lower down his guard we have a six count now up to seven Henry funds the fight to continue on as we have an eight count now we're up to nine we're gonna have Henry retaining the title and with that becoming the season four undisputed men's internet champion huge victory uh, definitely a huge victory definitely doing with style so of the replays of the action here here is your winner and still men's internet champion henry lewis marshall yeah a huge victory for henry tonight and like i said the celebration is only begun beginning if you happen to be uh, part of team Henry then better be, be, uh, keep a close eye on him wherever he's gonna be ending up yes I can already promise you the party is gonna get wild take a break from the championship fights next up we're gonna be having a uh, eight man battle royale exhibition match eight men who did not have a title opportunity for tonight still wanted to take part of the breakthrough why should we stop them taking part in this we have Kasarian, Satoru, Andreas MacHunter, Jakin Young, Mark Hunter, Lord Benfic, Big Ham, and returning to the series right before the right before the end of it at least, we have the the gentleman, Philip Buster. himself the world guardian well uh, that's a bit pretentious if you ask me but and even more pretentious is what he to told me about that title of his it, it was apparently granted to him by the most powerful god of them all 
to protect his home world against other gods, you know, and that's that's just like sounds like a whole, whole lot of whole, horse malarkey, if you if you ask me. And when I told him about, when I said that to him, he asked me, "What's a horse?" In any case, we are, we are here to see see some wrestling action, some brawling action. Let's see as we have. Here comes to the ring the savior, the shadow lord, the shadow savior. The man, big man himself, Satoru. And from the other side of darkness, weighing in at 260 pounds, Satoru, the savior. A yeah, very interesting situation as we have both Kasarian and Satoru inside the ring. The duo now apparently in some kind of a partnership with one another, so it may to be seen whether or not that partnership is going to be shining through the match here. Of course, it's every man for themselves, but it's not unheard of to a ring a Battle Royale match or overall in any eight man matches that there are temporary alliances. Could be lasting from one attack all the way to the end of the match. All about taking the opportunities. And here is a man who definitely knows a thing or two about opportunities. And from Finland, weighing in at 185 pounds, Andres Mac Hunter. One of the high flying brothers, one of the hunter bros. The other one is gonna be coming up later later in the lineup here. But nonetheless, Andreas Mac Hunter gonna be showcasing his skill and talent and despite being a high flyer he, he could still do very well in this match remains to be seen. It would be a huge testament, a huge statement win for him. So that about it he is. I'm the most stylish of the competitors here tonight. The man definitely knows how to take care of himself and how to make himself look great. And here we have yet another person who is always looking great no matter what's going on. Ruffman Blues already earlier tonight celebrating a huge victory with the Disco Warrior Henry Louis Marceau retaining the Internet Championship and with that earning season 4 undisputed Internet Championship title for himself. Taking now, hoping to keep up the momentum for the Ruffman Blues team and earn big tonight in this 8 man battle royale match. Definitely our audience. And a fan favorite here, a man who's always going for the cheers, and they always, always someone who looks great doing it. Like, look at that! Can you, can you, can you pull off a maneuver like that? I bet you can't. I definitely can't. I don't even tempt me to try. That's uh, that's not gonna happen. A man who's definitely always willing to try whatever comes out his way. And from Finland, weighing in at 213 pounds, Mark Hunter. The legendary high flyer, the season one veteran brawler, Mark Hunter, one of the original characters. Well, I would actually actually say he was the num first person to ever sign up to Brawl Masters. He's the beginning of it all. Not much of a, not many, that many time championship title holds on his, under his belt, but that doesn't matter to Mark. He doesn't care about the competition as such. He cares only about one thing, and that's making a real enjoyable show, a real 
the real show what which makes you sweep off sweep, get you swept off your legs i'm messing up my words here <laughs> and yeah mark is all about the maximum crowd pleasing value make make the crowd go woo let's see whether or not he's gonna be doing that as next up we have a man who's not about making the crowd woo more like making the crowd boo the Drow Elf Lord, Lord Fenwick. And representing Vicious and Delicious from your darkest fears. Weighing in at 195 pounds, Lord Fenwick. Yeah, don't be fooled by his glorious state and his, well, mischievous grin. If he got, he definitely thinks he is better than all of you, and he, if he did get the opportunity, he would actually enslave all of us without us a second thought. That's uh, that's just part of the trope psyche. They they do believe themselves better than everyone else, and I suppose in the case of Fenwick, that holds extra true, considering how he and his partner Christina Van Mortis have been dominating in the mixed center tag team uh, setup. Well, next up, we have a season one veteran brawler, the biggest of them all, from the United States. At one time, the face of Brawl Masters. Here comes Big Ham, Hammond Nelson. And from the United States of America, weighing in at 16 pounds. Hammond. Big Ham Nelson. Absolutely fantastic, a unit, and uh, absolutely fantastic to see him come. No matter how how many matches he is in, it's always a joy to see him. The man definitely has the high, right attitude and the right approach when it comes to brawling. And here in the breakthrough, he's gonna continue on giving those amazing shows he's known for. As we also saw some talk with uh, Big Ham potentially hinting that he w could be getting one of his cousins to come here and uh, enjoy the series, uh, potentially make a tag team with him, but we, we will see. He told, uh, he told me to do that, you know, he uh, told me to give you that kind of a teaser. Uh, that's straight from his mouth, not from mine. And here we have one returning star. And their opponent, representing the powers of pain, from London, England, weighing in at 215 pounds, Mr. Philip Foster. Yeah, it's been a while since we've seen the British gentleman, Philip Foster. Not, not since he lost the title, he lost his rated R. Was it rated R title? Now, now I'm blacking out. No, it wasn't Raider R, of course it wasn't. What title did he lose? Was it the Martial Arts? Yes, it was the Martial Arts title, that's right. He lost the Martial Arts title to Marshall David, and after that we haven't seen Philip Buster, but now he's back. And here we go, bell has rung, and ring is absolutely full of people, but it's gonna get... <laughs> people are gonna get ejected out of it real quick, as this is a Battle Royale match. Get your opponent over the top rope and make their feet touch the ground. No pinfalls, no submissions, no disqualifications, and no exiting the ring. Satoru going for cheap, uh, try, uh, or at least very de uh, deceptive punches against. Jo uh, who did we have? Taking Young, Mac Hunter already going over the top rope. Fenwick unable to uh, eliminate him out of the match, though. Yeah, that's very interesting situation. It's, it's full on chaos inside the ring uh, until we get uh, at least a few people eliminated here. Jakey dropping the knee. 
Mag try to get hold of Fenwick, but that not working out. Casaria takes out Mark Hunter. And Philip Foster going and tearing up the arm of Big Ham. I don't I don't know where is where is Philip going? Oh he's gonna pick up a fight with Satoru now. Interesting choice and definitely something he's gonna be paying now as he gets caught up, lifted up into a fireman scary being spun around here, going round and round and round and taking almost getting eliminated by Big Ham. Look at this slow motion action here. Beautiful German suplex into a Pele kick by Mac Andreas Hunter or Andreas Mac Hunter actually moves off kick to follow that up. Fenwick almost uh, getting into the ropes, not quite, and now takes down Mac with a body slam. Mark Hunter with Electro taking. Fenwick set up against the ropes and Mac looking for the first elimination of the match here. Pushing up. Tossing him over the top rope, Benfic about to get eliminated if Mac is able to push him off. No, he's able to get back inside the ring there. Jumping DDD from Mr. Philip Buster against Satoru. Here we have Big Ham sending Kazarian over the top rope, looking for the elimination. No, gets a knee to the face there. Kazarian making his way back into the ring, gonna be needing to send him over the top rope again. And here we have once again Philip pulling on the arm, twisting on the arm. Satoru getting the oh drop kick straight to the chest. There was straight to the face actually. I think he landed. And another drop kick there from Mark Hunter to Jake. He drops the leg again. Yeah, constant leg drops to the collarbone. That's gonna be hampering his advance here. Mark now going after Big Cam. Season one veterans going up up against one another. Lifting up body slam straight to the center of the ring. Uh, side slam actually wrenching the arm, wrist, clots giving, giving Philip Foster a taste of his amazing and now spinning around going for multiple spins gonna be making Philip real dizzy oh he's gonna go for a round Ben Pick about to get eliminated no way Kazarian unable to finish the job here Jumping neck breaker from Kazarian, taking sent over to top, and there goes Mark Hunter making the first elimination of the match here. Sending taking outside the ring, leaving only seven men here. Unfortunate for Jake in the Riven Blue celebration is gonna be cutting short, but hey, at least this way he gets to join Henry in the bar as soon as possible. Mac trying to deliver a drop kick to his brother, but unable to do so instead. Mark declaring the fight to be over with the drop kicks him shows how the older brother does it. Sending Mac over the top rope looking for an elimination. No bitching the shot there. I don't know what he was thinking there. Maybe maybe a, a grace. Maybe gra allowing <laughs> allowing allowing him to get back. Missing the drop kick. Mac definitely getting the smarts there. He can get taken down. A sl jumping sleeper slam. Kasarian now being caught. Philip sent into the corner, but no one there to take the advantage of the situation as Satoru caught Mac unaware. Kasarian sending Mark over the top rope. Oh, missing. Tumbles around. But misses the opportunity to eliminate Mark Hunter. Picks him up. Goes for the rolling elbow. Goes after Mac now, but Mac setting up. Fisherman suplex. Big Ham dropped down. Philip now be caught in the sidelines of Mac Andreas Hunter. Andreas Mac Hunter. I'm messing up the order of the names here. Gonna be setting up. Finvik just got eliminated by Kasarian. And here to be as, as, as end of him with a big congratulations sent over to the top rope. Satoru looking to eliminate Kasarian. Never mind. Doesn't manage to do that. The duo are fighting now. But Philip here to break it up. Comes around. Hurricane Ranas. Here comes Big Ham with a big maneuver, slams down Mark Hunter. Six men remaining here. We still have both of the Hunter brothers, well not necessarily for too long. Oh yes, we're gonna have. We got this, another airplane spin. Going around and around and around. 
And he's gonna just bring Kasarian around the other way around. Mac leaning on the ropes. Philip unable to eliminate him. Yeah, Kasarian definitely gonna be very woozy after that. So is Satoru, but not as much necessarily as Kasarian. After all, he was the one in control. Satoru now lifting up Kasarian. Trying to overpower him and send him flying to the outside. Sends him over the top rope there, but... Not enough to toss him off out of the ring. Could I try to push him down now? But Kazarian, yeah, able to kick, uh, punch the leg and get back inside the ring there. Here we have Big Cam sending Mark over the top rope. He crashes outside. Mark Hunter eliminated by a fellow season one brawler, Big Cam. Five men remaining in this exhibition match. Satoru going to work. Oh, what a stiff punch there to Mac. Makes a counter. Gets caught up again in strikes. Lifted up. Oh, Mac. Able to jump out of the way. Kazarian sent into the corner by Big Cam. Kicks down Philip instead. Let's see. Kazarian going to work after Satoru. Punches him down. Philip twisting the arm of Big Cam. Rolling punch. Missing. Philip able to catch hold of Mac. Setting up hammerlock, another hammerlock suplex here. We can't catch hold of Kazarian, setting him up and sending him down with a slam. A very powerful at that. Oh, insult to injury there from Philip Buster. Another one driving the knees to the midsection of Satoru, thinking that was enough and that was definitely plenty of damage done. Kasarian coming around, trying to catch hold of Satoru, able to do so and try to track him to the ropes. Sent into the corner instead, I could have been trying an elimination that way, lifting up leg. All the over the top ropes now, now all he's gonna do is launch him off. And he's got the elimination, but that's a lot of man, that's a lot of lord to get out of this fight. Or that lot of savior. Now able to punch his way back inside here, kick to the gut there, club to the back, big camp. Takes down Satoru, sending Kasarian to the ropes, double axe handle missing, rolling elbow, hitting. Satoru getting hold of Mac, but Mac with elbows able to escape the cold. Takes down jumping neck breaker. Let's see, get, getting the leg caught, a boot stop to the gut. Philip in a precarious position, once again trying to set up against the ropes, their big hand lifting him up, shoulder carry. Breaks him around with a power slam. A shooting star there from uh, Mac Hunter. Picks up Philip. Catching hold. Elbows driven to the midsection. Not about to let Mac dictate where, where he's going to be going instead. Philip going to be dictating where Mac is going. Face buster. Countered by Mac and Satoru here. Sending Philip over the top rope. Mac. Unable to finish the job there as Philip is able to kick him through the face. Good, good solid way to keep yourself in the match and definitely something that not a lot, no, not everyone could manage to do. Big Ham able to knee. Philip gets slapped by Mac. And once again caught by Satoru. These men are just wearing and tearing each other out. Satoru set up against the ropes here. Sato Kasaria coming in. Polarizer saving Satoru from elimination. Yeah, that, that, that's what I was talking about. With potential alliances. Kasaria actually coming in and saving the savior from elimination there. Sunset flip. Mac takes down Satoru. Become retaliating against Kasarian here. Lifting up, power slam. Satoru able to avoid elimination once again. Gonna be straight, spinning Mac around. Around and around he goes, where he stopped, only Satoru knows. As he's gonna be spinning him around one more time, the other way around. That's gonna be definitely setting up Mac for, up for an elimination. Here's talking about elimination, Big Ham being lifted, or at least trying to get lifted. 
Kassarian trying to lift, but yeah, that's way too much power, that way too much man to lift up like that. that. Not enough of leverage for the elimination. Kazarian being attacked by, 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 but Big Cam getting attacked by Satoru, and Satoru now takes the opportunity, sending Kazarian over the top rope, gonna look for an easy elimination, never mind, Kazarian making way, his way back inside the ring, so much for that alliance, sent into the corner, caught by Big Cam, kick to the gut there, Kazarian set, being set up here for the backstabber, <laughs> very, very, very adept, very apt for Satoru to go for the backstabber here. Picking up Kassarian and going after Big Ham now. We want Mac striking Kassarian and now going after Philip. No, no, not really looking. Pulverizer one more time from Kassarian. And a rolling elbow to the face. And another one taking down both Mac and Philip. Big Ham with a big power move here. Slams down Kassarian, not close enough to the ropes to toss him off, but if he's able to muster up that kind of strength, no doubt about it, he will be able to eliminate Satoru. Satoru being attacked by Kassarian, bad mistake there, Satoru setting up Kassarian, no! Kassarian sends Satoru outside, able to sidestep and push Satoru off the ring. Kassarian eliminating the savior after coming into his rescue. Philip sent outside by... Big Ham, and we're down to three. Three men remaining in this Bow Royale match. One of them will be getting a huge victory tonight. Is it gonna be Big Ham? Well, not necessarily, as he's being set up here on the ropes here. And double teaming action now. Mac and Kazarian teaming up to take down the biggest of them all. Big Ham able to get his hand up. No, yeah, that's still too much mass. Even for two men, that's way too much mass to lift up like that. Could have to rely on some other strategy. Moonsault kick here. And now trying to lift up Big Ham. Trying to go for the same maneuver that Kazarian did. Yeah, he's telling that that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work, Mac. You have to think up another strategy. Gets an elbow to the face and Big Ham now. Trying, trying to launch himself at Mac, but that's not working out. Sent into the corner again. Mac looking for an elimination, the same elimination again. Kasaria coming here. Oh, he's able to get him up. Trying to get the crowd to cheer for him. He can lift it up in a very precarious position. If Mac is able to get some more power into that. No, gets an elbow to the face and we can back inside the ring. Kasaria now trying his luck against Big Ham, sending himself against the ropes here. Turns him around and tries to lift him up in the same awkward position. Oh, able to get some power this time around. Become definitely has been worn out by constant elimination attempts. But is it enough? He's No, he's able to get back inside. Able to shift the balance at Kazarian. Oh, gets an elbow to the face. Now it's Max, Max turn here. Sent into the corner by Big Ham. Looking to eliminate him very easily here. Lifted up to the top turnbuckle. Looking to launch him off, Mac has to think of a way to escape this real quick or it's uh, game over for him. Lining up, no, gets a punch to the face there. Kasarian waiting for the opportunity to strike but not able to do so. Instead, he caught up here, gets an elbow to the midsection from Big Ham. Let's see what the move is gonna be here. Mac just taking a relaxation on the top ropes. We can picking up Kasarian. Lifting him up. Gonna look for an elimination potentially. No, Kasarian shifting the balance here. Inverted DVD. Takes down Big Ham. And now, oh, what a jumping knee to the face of Mac. Who was just having a good time. Not having to worry about either of the competitors. And they're back to each other. Well, Kasarian is back to missing the drop kick. Big Ham with the opportunity. Sending Kasarian into the corner. Both Mac and Big Ham looking to eliminate him. Not enough space there for two men, but maybe one man is enough. Turning around, Big Ham elim eliminates Kasarian, and it's down to Mac and Big Ham. Not Big Mac, but Big Ham and Mac. Trying to send him into the corner again, and trying to lift him up once again with the same awkward pull 
Well, he was able to get Big Ham to the top rope earlier, but I don't think he's able to do that now. He's wasted way too much power, strength. Uh, yeah, he's relied more of a running attack than a lifting attack. Elbow to the face there from Big Ham. Mac was able to avoid the attack there, but not enough to avo avoid. Oh, striking Big Ham with an elbow as well. Sidestep out of the way. Beautiful toss and a Pele kick. Mac definitely dictated the fight here, but if he's unable to get Big Cam over the top rope, well, he's able to do that now. It's only a matter of time. Well, not only a matter of time, but managing to do that. Andreas Mac Hunter eliminated Big Cam at long last, and with that, able to secure himself a huge victory in this eight man battle royale, outlasting seven other men. A very tough contender said that, and it was a very tough competition during the midsection, as you can see from the replays here. Definitely everyone here giving their best in our premium show tonight. Here is your winner, Andres Mac Hunter. Nonetheless, there can be only one winner, and tonight that belongs to Mac Andreas Hunter. I still keep messing up his name order. The sixth match of the night is gonna be a one-on-one -on -one submission fight. The number one contender for the women's Grand Prix title, Kathy Gardner, goes up against both the Grand Prix title holder and the leader of the new foundation, Amaya Grace. The following contest is a submission match and is for the women's Grand Prix Championship! And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The top title in the women's division available for tonight. And tonight looking to be a very lucky girl indeed. Uh, uh, Kathy Gardner. I uh, will maybe lucky is a bit of a wrong word here. After all, she has mu very much deserved this. Uh, uh, title opportunity multiple times already a Grand Prix title holder now looking to get back into to the top of the division once more having I mean, defeated Martha Baker for this number one contender positions of hers she is very certain and very confident that she's able to defeat Amaya Grace after all she doesn't uh, think anyone is uh, be, be, beyond her reach But let's see what the leader of the new foundation thinks of the situation and thinks of her opponent. Not just the leader of that, but also the leader of the women's division as she's holding on to that Grand Prix title. Representing and cementing her position as the greatest of them all. Having defeated none other than Magic Maggie for that title in a submission fight. Now thinking that she can retain the title in a submission fight. Uh, submission fight. Let's see whether or not that's gonna actually be happening. Uh, nonetheless, yeah, this, is, this is in perfect. Perfectly suiting for the champion here as no doubt about it. Amaya Grace is all about making everyone else submit to her. And if she's able to get make Gaffy submit just like she did. Magic Maggie then there's no doubt about it that she will be a legend in the roster a, le a legend in the women's division I mean first defeating Magic Maggie in her own game and now using that same game to take on another season one veteran brawler Things are looking real good for New Foundation tonight, if she's able to get a victory here. And here is the greatest of them all, the Grand Prix title. Introducing the challenger. From no place in particular, 
Shy Girl, Kathy Gardner. And introducing the champion from the City of Angels, she is the Women's Grand Prix Champion, Amaya Grace. Title on the line here. Let's see. Amaya Chris looking very tall and proud. I'm very, very confident that she'll be walking home with it, but Kathy Gardner has time and time again proved that she is not to be underestimated. And I don't think there is anyone in the roster who would actually underestimate her. If you've seen her working in the ring, you definitely know how tough the Psy Girl actually is. Able to start off the match here by sending the Grand Prix champion into the corner. Spuns her around and pushes the face straight to her own boot there. Trying to catch hold and send her back into the corner, but Maya Chris not about to let that happen. Uh, as the defending champion, she has chosen a submission fight here. So there are no pinfalls here, nor disqualifications. The only way to end the mass match is via a submission hold. So it's going to be real interesting to see. Gaffy is not that big a technician, she is more of a striker and well she's an ingenious striker you know she's taking the simplistic style you know not not professionally trained but uh, not nonetheless she uses what she knows and that definitely has paid dividends previously in the ring after all she is a multiple time uh, grand prix title holder amaya grace just once this is her first title reign so remains to be seen uh, how she'll be faring up against this seasoned veteran schoolgirl into a power bomb. No count out, so no need to worry about getting back into the ring. However, the submission has to take place. The winning submission has to take place inside the ring, otherwise, it's not gonna count. Kathy climbing back inside the, the ring. Warming herself up, getting those arms nice and loose. Catching hold, sleeper, match slam. Champion being taken down, picking her back up to her feet as the number one contender keeps on put, putting on more and more pressure, sending Amaya Grace once again into the corner. And once again slamming the face into the boot. Catching hold again. Lifting her up into a fireman's carry here. Amaya Grace completely helpless as she's getting to meet. Getting face to face meeting with the turnbuckle. Able to get the kick up and catch a hold of Amaya. Hammerlock inverted DDT. Stops to the arm and really looks like we're gonna be setting our first submission hold here of the fight here. The arm trapped cross face hold. Very beautiful, but Gaffy very confidently able to roll through it. Gets the knee to the back and punch to the face with that able to escape. Missing the block there whatever she was doing and Amaya crowd now looking for a submission you would think but no she's just gonna go for that wicked step sister yeah you could actually hold that into a surfboard uh, submission but for some reason uh, it's it's not allowed here looking to end this with a crucifix power bomb one two blow to the season one veteran who almost trained number one brawler in the season one actually finishing number two Locking up the cross face, no, they're letting her go instead. I don't know what, what she's planning here, but not satisfied with getting a victory just yet. The Grand Prix champion has more in mind to take down Kathy Gardner, but that might be backfiring on her. Missing the elbow dive, and with that, Kathy get, getting back up to her feet. Strike gets countered. Amaya catching hold. As the Grand Prix champion is oh getting an elbow to the face, missing the kick there and okay, catching hold of the situation again, but elbows from Gaffy. Uh, allowing the separation and allowing the contender, the challenger, backbreaker. Hasn't gone for a submission hold yet, but steadily working her way up there. Catching hold of the neck and twisting it. Nasty, very nasty. Setting up the arm here, trapping it, gonna drop down the knee once more onto it. Missing the stomp and Amaya with slaps. 
very disrespected slap from the Grand Prix champion, but hey, whatever gets the job done, sending Amaya over the top rope, now catching hold, club to the head, and a drop kick sending Amaya outside. Cafe coming in here, following up in pursuit. Sends Amaya back inside the ring. Comes in herself and looking to finish this match off right here with a big maneuver. Eat defeat. That slides out for the champion. Let's see if we're gonna have a new champion as we have in locking in a colossal clutch. Digging in those fingers deep into the face and pulling hard against the back. Amaya has to think of a way out of here. Oh, she gets let go. Caffey realizing that was not enough pressure on the champion. Is that gonna have to rely on some kind of utter move? Never mind. Amaya countering. Punch to the gut there, catching hold of her head. Elbow to the face. Catching hold of arm and leg, trying to drag her away from ropes. I don't know why. Are there rope breaks in this? Yes, there are. Previously there were, so why would there be this time? Waiting patiently, catching hold. Oh, stiff elbow once again, try, driven to the face there. Sitting up the arm here, goes for the leg drop arm breaker. Solid strategy, you cannot uh, escape out of a submission if you don't have any strength remaining in your arm. Or arms for that matter. Trapping the arm and say, pulling it over the top rope. Kathy Gardner taking control, never mind the control just got lost. Another slap from Amaya. Yeah, she's really into those slaps. I mean, yeah, it's a, hard, a stinging impact. On the top rope now. Lining up a crucifix powerbomb one more time. Planting Gaffy in the center of the ring. Stomps right onto the arm. Makes her roll to the dead, the dead center. And once again, arm trap cross face. Let's see. Gaffy barely managing to hold on. She taps up. Gaffy Gartner taps out. Amaya Craze retaining the women's Grand Prix title, making a season one veteran brawler submit to her once more. A huge victory for her and a huge day for New Foundation. And there was no time wasted with that, she just knew exactly what she needed to be done. And she did just Here's that. Winner, and still women's Grand Prix champion, Amaya Grace. A huge monumental victory. Definitely worth it for the Grand uh, Champion position, Grand Prix position. All right, next up, we're gonna be getting an absolutely wild. Eight woman fatal four way knockout elimination tag team match. We have the defending champions, the thrill seekers, defending their women's wrestling alliance championship titles against six other competitors, three other teams. As we have the natural disasters, two cool, and Cooper Screw uh, hoping to earn gold here. Let's see which one of these teams is gonna be earning it, which one of them will be left as the last women standing. Time to go absolutely animal wild. The following contest is a fatal four way tag team match. It is for the Women's Wrestling Alliance Championship. Introducing first, the Natural Disasters. Matt Duck, Whitney, and Riley the Nightmare. For the longest time, they've definitely been the underdogs. Well, one underdog, one under horse of the competition. But tonight, being invited into this match as the number one contenders, a position they happened to won from the team of Too Cool after the champions decided that just defeating the new foundation was not enough. They needed to prove themselves against this duo as well. Unfortunately, for the Too Cool, did not happen. Come out their way, and we, as such, 
they, they have earned themselves the title opportunity here. And speaking of too cool, even though they're not number one contenders anymore, nonetheless, they have been invited into this match. Thanks to the last stunt they pulled first on Thursday. Cool. Both Snow Princess Yuri and Diane Van Damme attacking the Wrestling Alliance champions before their scheduled mat match with the Cooper Screw. And Yuri going as far as taking the championship belt from Caitlin O'Neill and smacking it across her face and back. Yeah, Ka Caitlin and Sophia both were outraged by this and instead instead of going for a two-on-two -two match, decided this will be settled once and for all as a fatal four-way tag team match. Very, very good for the Snow Princess and Diane who definitely felt like it was unfair for the champions to give their number one positions away to the natural disasters. But not now they're in a fight of their lives, as there are <laughs> six other contenders ready to beat the crap out of them. The third team entering into this match. One half of Cooper's crew. Making their way to the ring, the Alexia Regado Terra Nguyen Li May. The men's portion of the Cooper's crew, Captain Cooper and Outlaw Casey, managing to retain the Wrestling Alliance Championship titles. And tonight, the, uh, the women have the similar opportunity to full on take the titles. And with that, the Cooper's crew would be full on dominating the tag team divisions in the entirety of the series. That would be a huge, huge victory for the team. But let's see whether or not. Alexia and uh, Lee May can actually do that. Alexia was gone for a long time due to an injury caused by Gloria Garcia. Man has to make her return to the series. And with that, now able to take part in this as invited by the champions. Yeah, both Sophia and Caitlin wanted everyone to take part in this. Just to make sure that Yuri and Diane would be getting theirs. And if you want lethal strikers, you definitely have them in the sense of Cooper's crew, but also in the sense of the champions. As here we have your defending women's wrestling alliance champions. And their opponents, they are the women's wrestling alliance champions, the thrill seekers. The Thrill Seekers definitely looking for a thrill tonight, but also looking a bit of a payback against the Too Cool. Let's see whether or not they'll be able to get that as they have envisioned this very fatal match up here. Four way tag team elimination knockout. Rules are simple, and I'll get to them as soon as the match bell rings here. As we have. Well, if the champions are able to retain, that will be a huge victory for them. Not enough to change the division rankings noticeably, but definitely would be cementing themselves as the undisputed Women's Wrestling Alliance champions. I mean, would it get any more undisputed than this? And here we go, the ring is absolutely full of people, the bell has rung and this match is on. And the Cooper's crew are going after two cool and Sophia already sending Matt Dog Whitney out of the ring. Gonna, was gonna look for a bit of momentum, but too many people on her way. Anyway, knockout elimination ta tag team rules. Very simple. You only have to knock out your opponent and with that they are eliminated. The last team that has uh, any members left will be winning. Either, either both members or as long as one, one, one member is remaining. The team will get a victory. There are no pinfalls, there are no submissions, there are no disqualifications. So it will really come down to the most extreme team here. And definitely testing teamwork uh, in such, you know, you gotta keep an eye out on your teammate as well, not, not let too much damage be done to them. Here we have Alexia Dragadotir lifting up. 
Snow Princess Yuri, I would have figured that Caitlyn would want, want a piece of her first and foremost, but for now she, she is busy with Riley, and definitely for a good reason. Riley and Matt Quinney, of course, are the legitimate number one contenders. And the re even if they're unable to win the match here tonight, they still retain that number one pos contender position, so they'll be able to go at the tag team titles at the next given opportunity. Sofia moonsaulting Alexia. Here comes Yuri and Diane also going after it's a three on one situation, but Sofia turning turning against Diane here, lifting up her choking slam. A uh, choke slam actually, not a choking slam. Now going after Yuri and sending her into the corner. Going for stomp there, misses as Yuri escapes the corner here, goes for helpful match slam. Yuva Caitlin O'Neill, the champion, one half of the champions, has been able to turn things around against Riley. Elbow to the throat there, drops her down. Boot to the chest, and now lifting up her for an alley oop. Alexia Regadotir also waiting, getting a chance at Riley as Caitlin goes for the Irish curse. Well, she managed to get one in before Alexia interrupted. Bit of an unfair situation going on. On the ring side, we still have. Diane Van Dam, Matt Dock, Whitney and Nguyen Lee May as Matt Dock is getting double teamed by both Too Cool and Cooper's crew. Diane and Lee May working to get her to take down the number one contender. I suppose both of them think that she does not belong in this match even though she has more of a reason here to belong than either of them. Yuri being locked up here, we're gonna be witnessing the beats of boat run are we gonna get to a full 10, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and Alexia with a full 10 beats of the boat run Caitlin O'Neill and Sophia Allen still inside the ring here going up against Riley the Nightmare Jawbreaker but yeah this is this, this is where the alliance sense comes in again now we're getting the ring populated again as Diane Van Damme, Matt O'Quitney and Nguyen Lee May all make their Way, a beautiful double face lock take down there. Diane being caught in the crossfire of Caitlin and Whitney. While in the nightmare against Sophia gets countered. Nguyenli May, however, from behind goes for a Hurricane Rana. Taking down the champion as she rolls to the outside. Caitlin looking to finish off Diane here. Preparing to come in, lift it up. Gonna go for that Emerald Flow Wison. Slams her down. Not enough to knock her out yet, but still the work being made and definitely a very hard impact at that. Lifting up Diane. No, Riley breaking it up. And here we have Matt Dock Whitney with the pedigree against Nguyen Lee May. Still holding on. Sit out Matt Slam on by Yuri there against Alexia. Caitlin going after Diane now. Catching hold of her, getting the elbows, and looks like Matt Dog Whitney going for that mad bulldog of hers. Nelly May again a strike, strike, an attack straight to the head, landing straight to the uh, face, straight to the mat. There, locking up double under one more time. The pedigree, not still enough to knock her out of the competition. Incredible resiliency as she has already suffered immensely at the hands of the mad dog. Here we have another Emerald Flow Vision. Riley the Nightmare still holding strong and still able to compete. Someone got knocked out. Oh, Matt Dock Whitney got eliminated there by Nguyen Lee May. There goes one half of the number one contenders. Oh, and once again, Lee May eating up the canvas. Sit out Matt Slam by Caitlin and Sophia trying to set Diane up potentially. Stomping on the chest. She's no, she's not going to go for the coast to coast. Meanwhile, on the ringside, Alexia keeping Yuri busy, not allowing her to get back into the ring. Sending her across the ringside, though. Has been and there goes Riley the Nightmare. She is out of the competition with that natural disasters. The number one contenders have both been eliminated from this match. They still have that. They still retain the number one contender position, though. So they'll be able to go after the champions, whoever they happen to be at the end of this fight. Yuri sending Alexia against the barricade. Meanwhile, we have both Caitlin and Sophia taking down Lee May and Diane. 
the champion showing how it's done, sending Diane into the corner, but unable to do so as Caitlyn was in the way, being lifted up by Lee May and Sophia now trying to drag Diane into the corner. Stomps her down and stomp into the chest multiple times. Alexia makes her way back into the ring. Go back outside she goes. Lee May looking for a big maneuver. Goes for the double stomp. Dropping like a bomb straight to Caitlyn. Kicks to the back. Springboard misses as Caitlyn rolls outside. Perfect ring IQ. Oh, and Sophia Allen just got eliminated. Got the, yeah, one half of the champion team just got eliminated there. Diane Van Dam eliminated Sophia Allen with a Cyrano from the corner. That leaves only the Cooper Screw and the team of Too Cool in full force. As Caitlin now has to defend the title all by herself. She has the advantage though in, in that sense that she's currently outside of the ring with in, outside any conflict so This would be a perfect opportunity for her to just rest up what she's doing she's taking apart the Announcement table I mean I suppose she's a bit furious about what just happened, but that's no way to Yeah, she's just waiting. She's just full-on waiting for the opportunity. Yeah, she has locked her eyes She has decided that now's the time to go after the snow princess No, she's gonna go after Alexia instead who clips back up to her feet. Lee May has been eliminated. Too cool. Still the only team left standing in full form. Here comes Diane missing the drop kick. Things are very serious. A very poor looking for Caitlin O'Neill right now. As so is uh, so is for Alexia as well. As we have one full on team standing united against two separate foes who don't seem to be going after one uh, the one unified team instead gonna be going after one another Alexia being caught here in the fire lines yeah this is gonna be Caitlyn versus Yuri and Diane at this rate yeah they want they want Alexia out of this competition all of them want oh Caitlyn changed, switching targets here going after Diane Van Damme now goes for the suplex and the champion has been planted down and looks like Yuri is planted down with the power bomb. Oh, devastating power bomb. Yuri is out of the competition. Caitlyn O'Neill didn't even get a chance to smack her down. Well, unfortunate for Caitlyn, but I suppose another Siranui this time a standing variation. So yeah, at least Yuri got a beat down. Caitlyn wanted, even though she was not the one to administer it. But I suppose she was satisfied with Alexia taking care of the job. Elbow to the throat there, Caitlin O'Neill stomping on Diane, looking to get her eliminated next, but here comes Alexia. Yeah, both of them want to take Diane out of this fight. Picking her up, going for slaps and chops. German suplex from Alexia, double team acts are going on. Alexia and Caitlin also have. A good amount of history between one another. During the third season, it was Caitlin O'Neill who took Alexia's spot in the Grand Prix division and went on to win the Grand Prix Championship. Yeah, it was during the TLC night. Number day one Raw Masters episode. Already a half a year ago. More than a half a year actually, but yeah. Diana fighting against that able to over able to come through able able to avoid you know not paying any attention to attacks from Caitlyn oh what is what is Alexia doing she's trying to lift both Diane and Caitlyn well finally resulting just Kate uh, Diane dropping the elbow to the champion they're lifting her up oh no slams her down Northern Lights bomb champion has been eliminated we're gonna have, have a new Women's Wrestling Alliance Champions and it's gonna be Diane Van Damme at this rate. Sunset Split. Or it could be Alexia Dregadot. It comes down to one final knockout, one final elimination. Alexia getting back up to her feet, kicks the leg. Catching hold of Diane, but she's just elbowing her way out of the way. Ooh, stiff punch, missing the kick there. Setting up here. Oh, boot to the face. Picks up 
the first mate of Cooper's crew sending her into the corner and she's gonna be looking for that Siranui one more time locks up the head and there we go oh not enough to knock Alexia out she is still in this fight it absolutely incredible I would have faked her that would have been it I was ready to call that but no gonna come in with the splash not done yet acrobatic talent on display here full on 360 Roxy 450 splash and with that Diane Van Damme reigning supreme the last woman standing and with that earning the titles to the team of two cool you would say that this is this was well this wasn't the worst case scenario for Caitlyn and Sophia but definitely not something that not something that they would have expected And the Snow Princess looking plenty woozy, but nonetheless here to celebrate with her tag team partner as now we have the Snow Princess Yuri and Diane Van Damme leading the women's wrestling lines division. But know that about it, natural disasters are gonna be set to go and set to challenge them for the titles as soon as possible. Starting up with the second half of the program tonight, you're gonna have a one-on-one -on -one Iron Man contest. And this is for the men's Grand Prix title. The number one contender has been decided to be the, the toughest of them all, the leader of the men's division, the Blue Brood, going up against the current title holder, William Styles, the Hammer. The following contest is an Iron Man match and is for the Men's Grand Prix Championship. Truly a contest between the Titans here as we have two legends going up head to head inside the ring. Here comes the challenger, the number one contender, sporting a new new armor, definitely, and definitely more fluish than that. It's the legendary bounty hunter, Chris Akrumirani, or as we've come to know him in the series as the Blue Brute. One of the greatest brawlers of them all. Toughest in the men's co uh, division, multiple time Grand Prix title holder. Has he actually held it multiple times? He has been multiple time champion, that, that's without a no doubt, but a Grand Prix title? Uh, no, not Grand Prix title, I'm sorry, I was talking about Grand Master title. When, when that was, I think, it was the Grand Prix equivalent, equivalent at the time. The Bounty Hunter still looking to earn the gold tonight here. Let's see whether or not that new armor of his is going to be aiding or hampering the process. But it's not, uh, it's not about the armor, it's all about the man inside. You can put on as much as Beskar, I believe he called that. And putting on his helmet as well before the start of the match here. As we have next up the defending champion, the men's Grand Prix champion, William Hammer. William Styles, the Hammer. A huge, huge stage with victory available for tonight. But William Stars joining the Pro Masters here in the fourth season. Now defending the toughest top title in the men's division. Just, uh, just in the final show, in the final uh, uh, premium show. Well, uh, by Gordon Jackson, the final show of season four. So, you know, that's a huge, that's a very huge statement. Having earned the title. Uh, at the summer brawl now facing the toughest of them all
Introducing the challenger from out of this world. Weighing in at 278 pounds, Brute Hunter. And introducing the champion from Springfield, Illinois, weighing in at 275 pounds. He is the men's Grand Prix champion, Hammer William Styles. It won't get any bigger than this. Or if the champion is able to retain the title, that will be a huge statement in the entirety of the men's division. And not at that, but just a Iron Man contest. So really looking forward to sending a message to the toughest of them all. The Bounty Hunter, however, very, very much ready for this fight. Clock has been set to 15 minutes. Bell has rung and the fight is on. Now, as Iron Man contest rules go... The man with the most force by the end of the, by the time the time runs out, will be declared the winner. Submissions or pinfalls have to happen inside the ring. If you get disqualified, that will count as a fall for your opponent, but the match cannot end uh, prior to the 15 minute ti time limit. So you know that that, that is going to be absolutely crusading a fight coming up for both of these men as the blue brute, the challenger. Already starting out heavy. You, you could say that that's a bit of an unfair advantage considering there are, there are plenty of hydraulics in that Mandalorian battle armor of his. Picking up, crossing the knee against the canvas there. Catch hold of the arm there, trapping it and stomping right onto the hand. Another stomp. Yeah, Blue Brute has come in prepared and with a whole new approach to this I suppose you could say definitely lo looking more more like a like look, look at the size of those arms uh, of course those aren't they don't, uh, that is the natural size that's, that's just mostly the body armor the battle armor he's wearing but still definitely looking more brutish now looking up a cross face hold here trying to get the first fall here rolls on his back no William uses that to turn the momentum against him and tries to knee to the face or to the helmet at least and Blue Brute has sent the champion outside the ring. Falls cannot, of course, happen outside the ring, so this is a very good position for either way. Of course, if it ends in a tie, then, then the champion will automatically retain. But countouts are illegal, so you have to worry about that. Oh, what a stiff punch sending the champion straight into the announcement table being up here heavy uppercut gets countered William Styles the hammer about to strike snap suplex snap German suplex I mean but for strikes up to a six count Joseph want to test the waters there blue fruit making his way back inside the ring here trying to get hold William spears him Backstepping out of the way and now looking up the both of them, wrist, driving the knee to the face, goes for the cover pretty early on if you ask me, yeah, not even a one, well, barely a one count. Wrenching the arm, I'm pretty sure that this is where the battle armor is gonna be more of a hindrance than an advantage and now looking up an STF submission hold here. Trapping the leg and holding the face, blue brute. Able to see if they get up, up and shift the balance of that. Goes for a uppercut. No, doesn't go for anything else. What else is that? Very interesting maneuver. Try to get a pinfall, but not enough. The blue brute needed, needed to put on some more pressure into this fight. Clubs the face. Elbow to the face there from the champion. So far, pretty even matchup here. And definitely I'm a, the situation one would have expected. Slap to the face. Gonna go for that seven star lariat. Into the cover. The champion hoping to get the first fall here. Two, no. Kick out at two. The blue brute still fighting. Setting up the arm here. Drops the knee right onto it. Knee to the back. Climbs to the top and comes in. Frog splash from the top rope. 
William starts delivering a heavy impact. Really just a hammering impact at that. So we have the arm here, hammer lock into a chin lock as well. Solid submission hold in the center of the ring. The blue brute has to think of a way out of this one on his own. He managed to pick up the arm there. And with that toss, William off. Missing the grand champion's uppercut. William able to counter that. Trying to lift up the blue brute, but yeah, that's way too much man. Way too heavy armor to even try to hope and lift up like that. Picks up the champion. All the way to the fireman's carry here. Picks him up. Oh, rolling elbow to the face. Not done yet. Gonna be lining up. Stomping right under the hand there. A more punishment gonna be dealt straight to the fingers. And that's gonna leave your hand sore. Blue Brute on the top. Mounting, punching and stomping to the chest. Of the champion drops the utter arm now and uh, stomps right onto the utter hand. Alright, this is really just very efficient, this dissecting your opponent. Yeah, Blue Brute, you don't have to be fancy, you only have to be efficient. Bounty hunting is just as much about fighting smart as it is fighting hard. Another uh, punch there, I, I believe he calls that rocket punch. Rope break, catching all of the rope there, forcing the break up there. Excellent ring IQ from the defending champion, no doubt about it, that could have been a free count. Grand champion's uppercut, launching William up in the air. And going for the cover now, here we have one, we have two count, and shoulder up. Still fighting through the pain and fighting through the exhaust. And it's been only six minutes and William already almost falling to the pinfall. He's got to mount up some comeback here, sooner rather than later, catching the leg there. Oh, flips the blue boot and drives in the knee to the face. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, a comeback here, lifting him up. Gonna go for that spine buster, never mind, once again. Way too heavy a man with all that armor. Trying to lift up, oh, well, this works. At least the snap German suplex is working. Picks up the bounty hunter here, lifting him up. There we go, finally hit him with the spine buster. Rolls up with the inner leg again. We have one, we have two. Yeah. I I just keep tell telling. If he use, would hook the outer leg instead of the inner leg, then he would know that about it get a pinfall at that. But no, it's all about showing off. Comes in with the shoulder block off the top rope and gonna look for one more. No, goes for the frog splash instead. Center of the ring planted. The blue brute is down. Trapping the arm, drops the knee right onto it. Picks up the challenger, rolls up. Yeah, give me a taste of his very own rolling elbow. Coming in, the blue brute just jumping at nothing and that causes him to tumble over. Well, kick to the face there. Turning things around against the champion. Oh, Grand Champion's uppercut. Woos up with the leg and try to get the pinfall. The first fall here of the fight. We have two and we have a... No, kick out. Are we sure that wasn't a free? Are we actually sure that wasn't a free? Because I could swear that was a free, but no. It was an actual kick out. I cannot believe it. You're so close. Blue Brute so close to the first fall. Halfway through the match. Both of these men so close to taking the lead in this. But so far away, that just talks about the caliber of the match up here. Here comes, once again with the rocket punch. And looking to finish it off with a combo it into a grand champion's uppercut. There it goes, there's no doubt about that. Blue Brute is gonna take the lead in this match. We have one, we have two, and we have a three. That's the first fall, Blue Brute taking the lead. Seven minutes remaining in this match, so plenty of time for William to play catch up, but he cannot let his guard down anymore. Spine buster. And once again with the inner leg. This this is really amateurish if you ask me. Well, <laughs> amateurish or not. That allows him to get uh, even out the score here. Okay, so it's one to one. And as I said, if the champion, if it ends up in a tie, then the champion retains. Goes for the seven star lariat again. And another spine buster. No, gets a club to the back. Pay, pay, try to play too much at once. The champion sent into the corner going for multiple attacks, multiple clotheslines. Four clotheslines in total, dropping down the champion. 
Oh, and the Grand Champions uppercut gonna be looking for another pinfall attempt here. Here we go, we have one, we have two, and we have a three. Blue Brute once again takes the lead. Real even, real even competition so far, turning around. Gonna go for a, yep, just what I thought. A rolling elbow to the back of the neck. Yeah, you cannot fool me that I know that's not, not, not a neck breaker you're going for, Blue Brute. Topping to the champion, once again punching, no, William turning it around, gets back on top himself, picks the leg here, drops the knee right onto it, multiple knees, uh, multiple knees, I mean multiple elbows to the knee, that's what I meant, and yeah, just really just furiously punishing the leg now, yeah, that, talk about taking out some pent up aggression here, picking up the challenger here, Elbows to the face and strikes following up Keeping the blue brute stunned and now setting him up against the rope here What is he what is he doing? He's gonna come off the ropes here both of them taking momentum close line Climbs to the middle rope here William looking for What is he he's waiting testing a blue brute to get back up to his feet and here he comes dives in with the shoulder Thrust, shoulder block. Picks up to the face, elbow to the face there from the challenger. Still, the, still leading in. Less than five minutes left of this match. Gets tossed off by the champion. Sliding elbow. Picks up the challenger. Slap to the face, and there we go. The seven star lariat. Into the cover now. Shoulders are down. Grasping the rope. Good ring IQ from the blue brute. Not so much from the champion. Should have tried to drag him away. Especially when you were the one who was grasping the rope previously. Kick to the midsection there. Blue brute now looking up. DDT. Picking up. And comes in once again with the rocket punch. Hooky up the legs, trying to get a solid lead in the, into this. We have two and we have a three. So that's a three to one lead for the challenger. Less than four minutes remaining. William Stars has to get at least two falls here in quick succession if he's hoping to retain the title. Catch all of the leg there. Dragons to reversal, going for the cover. Okay, well that's too hasty. That's way too hasty. That's not gonna result in a pinfall. It did, what the heck? Well, okay then. Well, Dragon Screw was able to get that, and now a Spinebuster to follow. William Stars evening out the score here in less than a minute. Three to three. And now William Stars, if he's able to retain, remain in this position, lung blower, double hook under uh, lung blower. If he's able to re remain in this position. Then he's gonna be retaining the title, but whether what's out, Steve punch from the blue brute, another one gets countered. Elbow from William, gonna go for a springboard attack here, close lining him down. Setting up the arm here, drops the knee right onto it. Oh, blue brute just got mad, you, can, you don't want to anger him. He will actually hunt down you and your family if you <laughs> are gonna be pissing him off. Picks up the Grand Champions uppercut once again, connecting, rolls up the leg and going for the cover here. We have one, we have two, and we have a three. Once again, Blue Brute taking the lead here. And once again doing that in less than a minute. Yeah, really quickly shifting the momentum of the match here. Either way around. Yeah, that's just how equal these me two men are right now. Catching the kick, William Stiles. Retaliating, lifting up, Spinebuster gonna be equaling out in less than half a minute actually. We have one, we have two, and we have a three. Damn it is to do that, it's four to four right now in this battle of the titans. Look at the arm here, twisted is, twisted, twi twists it. English is hard by the way. Double under who gonna go for another lung blower. Definitely the right strategy in this case. Picks up. Goes for the slap, and once again, the seven star Lariat goes for the cover. William trying to take the lead here. 90 seconds left, as he does it. 4 to 5 for the champion's advantage. Blue Brute has to get at least two falls here in less than 90 seconds if he's hoping to still get that title. Picks up William. 
trying to safety, trying to lift him up and just managed to do just that, lifting him up and drops him down. Snake eyeing him into the turnbuckles. Using the entirety of his leg to choke the champion. And here we go, the last minute of the fight here. The determining moment, the climax of the fight coming up as William deals another spine buster. Goes for the cover, we have one, we have two, and we have a three taking a clear lead in this. Yeah, the, I don't, Blue Brute has to basically get four falls now or it's all over. Well, he's looking for the Grand Champion's uppercut, so that could definitely even out the situation right here. 35 seconds as he goes for the cover. One, two, and three. Still not enough. They're gonna need to keep on the pressure, no time to be wasting whatsoever. 20 seconds, it's always hard to tell the time inside the ring, but still 15. William Stiles slams the blue brute down, goes for the cover himself, trying to get that one, one nullified and does that. Five, four, three, two, one, and William Stiles winning despite getting grounded one more time. Yeah, absolutely a monumental victory for Williams. That's definitely proving himself to be a worthy Grand Champion, Grand 3 Champion. Re replays here, but honestly there was so much action happening in there. The replays do not do it justice. Here is your winner, and still, Men's Grand 3 Champion, Hammer William Stein. Absolutely a well fought victory here. It could have, it, it was looking very poor for William at one point, but he was able to overcome and turn the situation completely around itself. That's what I'm talking about when we have a Grand Prix champion. Next up, we have a one on one Helena Cell fight. Taking part in this is the masked warrior who has been attacking Eraser for a good while now. An Eraser as the defending champion has to put on his rated R title on the line here. Let's see what's gonna come. The following contest is a Hell in a Cell match and is for the men's rated R. Well, this team sounds very familiar. And here we have the challenger, the masked warrior, apparently calling himself El Tormenta. So, uh, I suppose that, that answers plenty of questions. Uh, this whole intro sequence answers a plenty of questions of who this man is and what's his deal. Nonetheless, has, has uh, taken a luchador, a lucha libre approach to resolving this problem. So now, now the newly christened El Tormenta about to take high and take his revenge on the Demon King here for the disrespect he's been laying out on him. Well, this is, this is definitely gonna be one interesting of a match, considering that El Tormenta makes the, becomes the first ever Lucha Libre, a, a luchador who takes part in the Brawl Masters, so... Hey, good to, good to have you here at the... right at the end of Season 4. This can be... I, I suppose this should be considered an official debut of such. And what a debut it is going up after the Rated R Champion who had a pretty, pretty amazing winning streak. Actually has a pretty uh, uh, remarkable winning streak so far. I think it, I don't think it got broken up. Well, that one, one disqualification or match that did not conclude between the Demon King and the Green Cyclone, but I, I suppose that doesn't count really. It was inconclusive, so it doesn't hamper. So yeah, Demon King Eraser with now. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five win streak going on. So let's see if he can if he can make it into a lucky six. And he he definitely has a interesting choice of wear here. Apparently, 
he calls this his true form, the true form of the Demon King being laid bare to us, so gonna be really interesting to see whether, whether or not that's gonna be actually improving his skills inside the ring. Especially against this El Tormenta character. Introducing the challenger from Los Angeles, California, weighing in at 226 pounds, El Thunder Storm. Yes, for not a anyone spe not speaking Spanish, that's basically what El Tormenta champion, means. From the pits of hell. Weighing in at 235 pounds, he is the men's rated R champion, Demon King E. Razor. All right, two people who have gone through, I suppose you could say a transformation just for the sake of this match. El Tormenta and E-Racer for the men's rated R title. Hell in a Cell about to commence here. And there's been a lot of, plenty of build-up just for this match up here. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The bell has rung and El Tormenta starting off with a kick and coming in with a springboard. De definitely new arsenal here we, we are witnessing with El Tormenta, I'm gonna be real excited to see what kind of a Lucha Libre fighting style he's gonna be giving us, considering, especially considering that this is a Hell in a Cell, so you know, weapons are included, he can actually go go for that more, more fr freedom, more freestyle fighting than usually would be allowed, E-Razor getting a weapon underneath the ring, he's got a baseball bat, tossing it inside the ring, El Tormenta coming to the outside, now pe playing a bit of get a mice with one another as El Tormenta makes Eraser chase him and switching places around with one another. Really interesting, yeah! El Tormenta just making a fool out of the Demon King right now. Oh, he's not happy about it. El Tormenta stepping outside, Eraser stepping back inside. Alright, and here we go. Our nope, El Tormenta once again slips back inside the ring and here he goes back outside. Eraser goes back inside. Alright, this is just Era <laughs> very and there we go. Finally catching up in El Tormenta taking down the Demon King. Well now that, that was very highly entertaining to watch and now with the baseball bat, El Tormenta paying <laughs> giving a payback to the Demon King for the disrespect he previously was put through. I'm not gonna be saying what this respect is if, if you've been watching this series along the news no because I don't wanna spoil you know the mask of the luchador it's a sacred thing so you so you know I cannot now go back and tell who who this is but anyone who has been a fan of the show for for an well I suppose I can say it that the, that uh, the key point you want to look at is the summer brawl that uh, that's where you wanna look at things. But yeah, oh, El Tormenta getting smacked with the baseball bat now, dropped down, and e Eraser just demolishing the Lutza Warrior. Picking up the baseball bat, missing again. Lifting up, waist lock slam. He picked up here. Lifted up to the shoulders. Tormenta, El Tormenta lining up. Big maneuver here, tosses Eraser against the wall, makes him crash hard on the outside. That was really ingenious. I don't think I've ever seen anyone utilize their cell in that kind of an offense. They're really impressive to see that kind. Drop kick hitting. Coming around, smashing El Tormenta straight to the steel steps. Uh, I'm smashing, smashing Eraser to the steel steps. Countering the Demon King now. Pushing around the Lucha Warrior. Sending El Tormenta back inside the ring. He picked up here, going for jabs and strikes. 
Yeah, this is highly intense. Oh, to the top of the head. Another one. Just smacking with the baseball bat. You can hear every single impact that Eraser just delivered. Climbing to the top rope now. The Demon King looking to fly. Let's see, he comes in, misses entirely. I, I don't know how or why, but hey, he did it. Running clothesline, actually I think that was clothesline from hell. If I'm not too mistaken, talk about disrespect from El Tormenta. Taking the champion's attack for his own. Elbows to the midsection as El Tormenta. Able to free himself from the hold, gets the baseball bat again, gets caught by the Demon King as he carries him to the corner, gonna be looking for that Demon Nails last opportunity, no, lets him go, or uh, was gonna go for a baseball bat, but El Tormenta back up to his feet, away from the corner and giving the snake eyes to the champion, the Demon King has been efficiently taken down, gonna get the baseball bat, smashing it in the corner, Eraser back up to his feet, only to get caught in a German. Thumping to the back here and... Oh, Eraser getting back up to his feet. Close line from hell, delivered by the non and on, one and only Demon King. Soldiers are down and we're going for the cover, retaining championship, never mind. El Tormenta getting the shoulder up, keeping this fight live. Yeah, he's been doing real well. I mean, not that much impact done, but so far he's been... The one to dictate the pacing of the entire match sent into the corner now and the Demon King now. Oh, there it is. Slashed across the chest. Baseball about to go to work. Never mind. Close line from hell about to go to work. El Tormenta is down. We have one. We have two. And we have a shoulder up. El Tormenta powering through and avoiding a free count. Should have, <laughs> should have tried the baseball bat first. Well, El Tormenta now running knee lift straight to the face, making Eraser drop the baseball bat there. Kick to the gut there, locking up the head. Coming in, lung blower, gut buster. Into the cover, now we go, we have one, we have two, and shoulder up, Eraser kicks out. Yeah, I don't think I've seen Eraser in this much trouble, coming in with a springboard attack. Busting the vase open of the Demon King, and now gonna be going for the blue thunder bomb of his. The thunder has struck down and we go for the cover. No, escapes the pin. Yeah, there, there, there's hint number two on who this El Tormenta actually is. Sent to the outside as this fight is gonna continue on the ring side now. The crowd is chanting fight forever, but I don't think the Demon King has that much left in him. Jawbreaker from El Tormenta, uppercut as Eraser is trying to capture himself up, but is surely getting just one-sidedly pummeled here, time and time again, caught from behind, coming in with a slam, Nova Toss. I, it almost looked like a slam, you know, could that be a slamming toss, you know? Can't caught again, that spun around, sent against the wall here, trying to use Eraser as a weapon to break free of the cell here, Eraser. Oh, does that to El Tormenta and the duo have broken out of their confines and are right now on the outside of the cell here. Right next to our live audience here. Uppercut from El Tormenta and he takes the opportunity to climb up. Let's see, yeah, De Demon King goaded by the Luchador Warrior is climbing to the top as well. And things have just elevated. These two have just ascended to the top of their game in the most dangerous position. You could imagine these two fighting. I, somehow I knew this would be exactly the situation. Spinebuster delivered. This would be the, exactly the outcome that was waiting for them. Gonna be coming in with the Rolling Thunder Senton. Yeah, re living through the, that moniker of his El Tormenta. Striking hard and striking fast. As E-Racer now trying to get some control going. Try to seriously enter El Tormenta. Trying to get him pushed off. Almost jumping down himself with that kick. Pretty sure that was, well, a very similar kick to bust that open. E-Racer now. These 
These men are really fighting it to the blood, blood and nail. Tooth and nail also kick to the gut. Their El Tormenta catching hold. Unable to keep holding on. Trying to get hold. Wastelock take down. Slamming down to the top of the cell here. You know that chain link uh, ceiling is, was not made for fighting. It, it was meant to confine. Not to be, be used as a fighting, fighting arena. But hey it's a hell in a cell. So this is exactly what you would be expecting. In a situation like this. Picking up. El Tormenta here. Chop across the chest. Trying to make him lose his balance and fall to the outside. El Tormenta fighting back. Tugging out of the way. Gonna be setting up. Back suplex drop. Doesn't drop it. Instead keeps the waist lock. German suplex. And one more for good measure. Locks up. A vertical suplex. I'll definitely slow down. The Demon King's advances here. We could be... Yeah, El Tormenta just going to full on down. Demon King still has some fight left in me. Hurricane Rana whip. Setting up the knee and slamming it against the st uh, chain link ceiling there. Going for strikes once again right on the edge of the cell here. Demon King... Has, now that they have broken out there, the Demon King has taken control of the situation. El Tormenta desperately needs to do something here to turn things around. He was so close to a victory earlier. Close line from hell. Of course, good, good thing for El Tormenta. He cannot be pinned or submitted on the ring side, which this is. Back suplex drop, drop right on the top of the ceiling, top, top of the cell. El Tormenta able to get holds, lifting up. Hairpool, mat slam. So far, the case, the cell has been pretty sturdy work. Like, I don't see any cracks on it whatsoever. Scoop slam right to the reinforced steel. El Tormenta looking for a big finishing maneuver, and here he comes one more time with the blue pow. Yeah, the blue thunder bomb. I think he actually broke. Yeah, he did actually break the top of the uh, cell there, but. No one fell through it. Jawbreaker. And it's gonna have to look for one more of those if he's hoping to drop down the Demon King. Catching hold, kick to the gut. Lift off. Into a gut buster. Yeah, it, El Tormenta has taken control. Well, never mind. Control has been just swept under his leg. Back to the corner of Eraser. Hair pull, match slam. Picking up the Luchador here, going up, looking up. Come, sin, sit out. Well, what do you call that? <laughs> yeah, it's always these few maneuvers that is so, so few people actually do that. Always, I guess, yeah. By the way, I'm a professor. Actually, I'm not a professional, but I'm trying to be. Well, I'm not even trying to be a professional, but I'm trying to make myself sound like a professional. That's what I'm doing. Back suplex drop. Once again caught up in this trifecta of moves. German suplex. And transitions it one more time to a vertical suplex. Slammed down hard. I'm gonna be required just that. If not even more. Rolling thunder once again. Yeah, we are. The, no matter who wins this match, we, we are talking about. There are no doubts in my mind that we have some... So, two, well, two people are gonna be checking up with the medical facility as soon as possible. Striking now. Eraser brought down. Catching hold. Space lock takedown. Picks up again. Eraser not even fighting back anymore as El Tormenta has full control of the match. Hammerlock suplex. Missing with the. Elbow there, e Eraser back on top, close line from hell. Oh, and almost losing his balance right there and then. Setting up your hip attack. Gonna set up the arm now, jumping leg drop. That's a very hard, yeah, caught in a, between a rock and a hard place, or in this case, that's a steel and a hard place. Demon and a hard place, close line from hell again. 
Yeah, those those are just flying. Those clotheslines are just flying one after another. Hair pull, mat slam. Trying to use El Tormenta to break through the ceiling, but doesn't seem to be getting much impact there. Stomping right onto the chest there. And now punching to the face. The Demon King in control for now. As the duo still keep on fighting on the top of the cell here. Gonna be coming around. Discus punch. Planting the Lutza Warrior down. Gets countered. El Tormenta now with the advantage opportunity. Slams down the Demon King. Setting up here. Hammerlock. And gets a hold of the leg. A hammerlock post, a single leg post on crap. Oh, look at this bend. Oh, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, Eraser ends up tapping out, submitting to El Tormenta. Unfortunately, it did not count as a victory here. But that's already a statement victory, you know, making the Demon King tap out like that. Setting up here, Waze Lock. Oh, no, never mind. German suplex. Caught up here, bringing a route. Gonna go one more time for the blue thunderbomb. Gets countered. E Razor slams him down. Picking up them. Man, lifting him up. Trying to lift him up. Gets countered. Absolutely wild. And you can only imagine for how much longer they're willing to fight here. Another blue thunderbomb delivered. Still on top of the cell though, so. Nothing the referee can do to break the match up here. Lining up here, another rolling thunder, giving a full demonstration of his capabilities. Absolutely amazing that he's still able to go for that. I'm gonna go for another blue thunder bomb. No eraser escaping, almost falling to his doom there. Lifting up, pop up, smashes down El Tormenta. Punching straight to the face now. Absolutely relentless. Catching hold, brings around another discus punch. The Tormenta picked up. Oh, E Razor getting a face full of fists there. Waze lock takedown. And now a helicopter spin. And at this point it's nothing about nothing short of humiliation. There, there, is, there is no fight here going on. There is no uh, attempt even. Like uh, El Tormenta does not care about the championship, it seems more like he cares about humiliating. Eraser and much much uh, advantage there, you know, uh, payback for the from the time he humiliated El Tormenta. Once again, a trifecta of suplexes, and now scrubbing the face against the chain link, drops the elbow to follow, stomping right onto the arm, elbow to the face. Let's see, kick to the midsection, another one, I am not sure one, really trying to make El Torm, uh, Eraser, I'm sorry I'm messing up the nays here, really trying to make Eraser to fall through or fall down, super kick connecting, and another elbow uh, drop straight to the face, picking up the man here, careful mat slam, setting up here, drop kick to the back, Missing the stomp, El Eraser once again on top. Hammerlock suplex. Oh, missing the top. Eraser catching hold, gonna go, or trying to go, arm track reversal. El Tormenta back on top. Setting up, beautiful solid position here. Back drop, suplex drop. German suplex transition. And now for a vertical suplex. Here it comes, and Eraser once again, landing hard right onto the top of the cell here, lifting up here, blue thunderbomb, oh, right onto the reinforced steel, not quite in a position to slam it through. Yeah, you can only imagine, you can only imagine just how much pain these two are feeling right now, but fighting through it, once again setting up for that. Hammerlock and single like camel clutch. A uh, camel clutch, I mean Boston crab. 
Look at the torque here, absolutely wild. Once again, the eraser has been made to tap. Doesn't matter though, the match continues on as El Tormenta goes for the Rolling Thunder sent on once again. Picks up El Eraser here, lifting him up. Able to shift his balance, gonna go for a German suplex and turn things around. Missing the knee drop and El Tormenta back on top. Trying to do whatever he can. Once again, a blue thunder bomb. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we need a Ky uh, we're, uh, Well, Demon King is gonna be ne needing a chiropractor after this one. There is no way. There is no way he doesn't have a back injury at this point. And they're still willing to go on. Once again, drops the elbow. We're really just smashing it down. Kick gets caught. Oh, but Enziguri gets not. He erased her completely out of his element, completely dominated here. Rolls back up. Spinning kick misses, or at least not necessarily missing, but more like hitting to the guard. El Tormenta now in an opportunity, drops down. Oh, almost making Eraser drop down all the way down. Gets back up, gets countered. Eraser with a stiff uppercut. Picking up, clothesline misses. El Tormenta catching back the situation. Picks up here. Kick to the gut, locks up. Hammerlock now, suplex delivered again. And these men are just exchanging suplexes on top. Well, mostly it's just El Tormenta tucks out of the way. Blue Thunder, but no back suplex drop. Gonna go for next for that German suplex. And from there. Transitions into a vertical suplex. There it is. Oh, straight to the yeah to the hardest part of the cell there. Picking up, lock him up, suplex. Oh, and there we go. You can see it's already crackling up. And El Tormenta looking to finish this job right here and now. Lift up, blue thunder bomb connecting. Drops down, eraser from the top of the cell. El Tormenta jumps down, goes for the cover. This is it. We have a new rated R champion, El Tormenta, making a very devastating victory here. Very beautiful, very beautiful indeed. That was just pure on awesome. The crowd was chanting, this is awesome. And I gotta agree with them. This was definitely one of the highlights of the entire show tonight. I'm, I'm just Here glad that the cameraman thought so too. Rated champion, El Thunder Storm. And El Tormenta claims gold tonight in this big Hell in a Cell match. The Demon King has been vanquished. And I, I think it's quite apt that it took a Luchador Warrior to get that job done. Congratulations to our new champion. Next up, we're gonna be taking a bit of a break from the high action and getting a one-on-one -on -one exhibition match, actually, not an exhibition match as such, but more of a grudge match. Here we have, next up, stepping into the ring, we have Martha Baker and Anna Cross Becker. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making her way to the ring from Birmingham, England, Mrs. Martha Baker. Despite not making it into the Grand Prix Championship title match, Martha Baker still got invited into the breakthrough event and by none uttered by her daughter, her first daughter, Anna Cross Becker. Be really interesting to see what's gonna happen in the ring here as it's gonna be mother versus daughter Here 
she comes. And accompanied by Kelly Baker, representing the new foundation from Cologne, Germany, Anna Crush Baker. It's been a huge night already for the new foundation as Amaya Grace was able to retain the Grand Prix Championship title. But now it seems like tonight is all about family. This is a family matter that needs to be solved between Anna Cross, Kelly Baker and Martha Baker. If you if you remember if you remember right at the start of the season four, we started the war between the new foundation and the Baker family really began and I suppose now we have come in full circle as Anna Cross faces off against Martha Baker once more. Kelly Baker joining on the sidelines here just to see the mats. Alright, let's see what's happen ma happening. Martha Baker tell telling Anna to come get her and Let's see just what's gonna come out of this match. The reason this was called, Anna Cross invited Martha Baker into this fight. She, she, she said that she had unfinished business with her, that she wanted to clear out. So, so let's see, lifting her up, Samoan drop. It's Martha Baker missing the drop kick. Yeah, very two different styles here. We have power style versus technician style, so... Bubble Queen versus New Foundation Enforcer. Not the first time these two have fought, but definitely... I, I would say that the stakes have, well, potentially be never been higher than tonight. I mean, th this could honestly make or break the future of, uh, of this trio. Sliding elbow. Lining up leg drop as Anna is... Full on taking control of the match, missing that time. Marfa Baker gets it, getting back to the top. Slides through, goes for the German suplex. <laughs> They're very apt of her. Drops the knee, uh, drops the elbow to the knee, and now punching the kneecap. Completely trapped there. Setting up, he's gonna do go for it once again. Very, very simplistic, but definitely an efficient way to create torment. They're gonna go for it again. Okay, now this is. This is, <laughs> well, I don't know, a bit, a bit of malicious, maybe, potentially, I mean, not sure, well, this is just disrespectful. Well, it depends, uh, you you just don't know what's going on in the head between these two, you, you just don't know, you can only try to as, uh, assume things from this point. Martha Baker taking down Anna with a side leg sweep, picks her up. Trying to set up for that Baker stunner, but gets countered and slammed down by Anna Cross. As now she stands in opportunity, she's gonna go for the stunner instead. Yeah, the Bakers and their stunners go for the cover. We have two count and shoulder up. Anna Cross, really? Well, that definitely turned the situation around and definitely got, got the situation going for Anna's sake. But let's see whether or not... She'll be, she'll be able to uh, uh, fully turn the situation around and get the control here. Looking up the temple, cross her, her signature submission hold here. Powerful nerve hold that's, uh, that's absolutely tormenting on your temple, hence the name, you know. But Marfa, able to get onto her feet, punts to the gut, another one. She's free and she's back in fight here, gets caught, no, gets a hold of Anna, sending her to the outside. Marfa trying to think up a plan here to do rolls outside herself and the duo are taking this fight to the outside now count outs are illegal so they could end in a count out but hopefully won't and I able to we go through goes for the German suplex drops down Marfa Baker picking her up here sending up and sending her inside the ring coming around Gets back inside the ring here, gets caught by Marfa, who's about to set her up against the ropes here. Strike and another one 
takes a momentum from the utter rope. Beautiful handspring action there. Yeah, you would imagine that. Well, I don't know. Marfa still is one of our more, most experienced. Actually, I think she is, you know, of, out of natural humans here. Sunset flip power bomb. Marfa's new signature maneuver going for the cover two and a kick out. Yeah, Marfa is uh, from from our natural natural humans. Uh, Marfa Baker definitely is uh, one of the most experienced. But caught in a caught once again in the temple crusher here. Let's see whether or not it's enough. She's bringing as much power as she can into that claw first. Not enough. Let's her go. Goes for the cover instead. Let's see if it's enough. We have one. We have two. Rope break. No. Referee did not see that. Anna Cross secures herself a victory here. Here is your winner, Anna Crush Baker. I talk about a job well done. I suppose this closes the book on this chapter between the Bakers and the new foundation, whatever that means. Well, hard, hard to tell at this point, but I'm pretty sure that this concludes their saga for now at least. And they can move on to bigger and better things and hopefully as, uh, as you know, respe still respecting one another. There's been a lot of drama between the participants here and there, so I'm just hoping that these are alright with them. But more importantly, I'm hoping that the next match is going to be one explosive one, as we're about to find out. Coming up in our next match, and more importantly, in our next segment of the, uh, tonight's show, the following matches will be determining the opponent for Cutie by Cook and uh, potentially what kind of a matchup we're gonna be getting. We're looking at potentially Selena Bochamp, Black Rose Julia, Aunt Teresa or Sweet Marie going up against Cutie by Cook for the season championship. These championship matches will be deciding who will become the number one brawler, the number one challenger for the season four. Starting us off, we have the women's martial arts championship title match Selena Bochamp defending against Victoria Sokolova and this is just gonna be a regular one fall match no special stipulation the following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the women's martial arts championship Get ready to kick things into the high gear, and I do definitely mean kick, as we have the number one contender and the challenger for the women's martial arts title out here tonight, none other than our beloved brawl arena, Victoria Sokolova. Absolutely a glorious, absolutely a fantastic striker here. Unrivaled leg power. Uh, yeah, no doubt about it. Those kicks are gonna be leaving. You you heard it for a good long time. Gracefulness combined with unrelenting assaults. Victoria Sokolova now stands at the pinnacle of her career, at least so far here tonight. Not just that, with the opportunity to earn the martial, women's martial arts championship title, but going up against the legendary Selena Bochamp, who came in second place during the third season. And Selena now, now still, still still lurking in the second place right now as we speak, actually. So th this championship match could make or break Selena's uh, ranking, honestly. L let's see. It's a situation definitely gonna be most interesting as we find out what's gonna happen as we have welcomed our champion, our most beloved and very stylish it seems, Selena Bochamp. Yeah, talking about dressing for the occasion. 
the mar women's martial arts champion leaves nothing to the doubt that she is the to at the top of the women's division. Absolutely a fantastic defense streak going on as well as she currently has four consecutive defenses of that title that she's holding. Let's see whether or not she can make, make it to five tonight and potentially earn herself a fight in the main event tonight. This is the moment to see that. Lo lose, losing the title of course means that she loses that opportunity as well. That it's gonna be handed down to someone else. Who it will be, we will find out in the later matches. But for now, let's let's actually focus on this. Introducing the challenger from Kiev, Ukraine, Victoria Sokolov. And introducing the champion from Montreal. She is the women's martial arts champion, Selena Bochamp. And here we go, kicking off the first match, or about to kick off the first match of the final championship race segment. Here, the season championship race involved, but. Before that comes the women's martial arts championship match here. Both, con both the challenger and the champion are ready. This is it. One fall match. Should miss an or pinfall. No dis uh, disqualifications applying. So yeah, that's gonna be interesting to see. Selena Bojamp did not want uh, any kind of special stipulation for this match. Just wanted a regular old. Matza, that, that definitely suits her as a martial artist here. Let's see. Oh, missing with the jump there. Victoria Sokolova getting now caught up here, lifted up, waist lock slam. Technique definitely being mastered there. Selena Bocha from the ropes goes for the Enzigiri. Coming back behind, goes for the stomp, but misses. Victoria misses. Selena Bocha taking control of the fight here, gets countered. Gets countered again. Selena Bochamp still in control. Gets countered. Victoria Sokolova now in control. Slap to the face of the champion. Setting up Hurricane Rana. Gets... No. Nope. Trying to go for the Hurricane Rana. But gets countered. Gets reversed into a power bomb from Selena Bochamp. Yeah, this is absolutely... These two, two women definitely at the top of their game right here tonight. And for a good reason, this is... No doubt about it, one of the high gonna be one of the highlights of the show. I mean it's always a highlight when Selena Bochamp is fighting. She is a phenomenal woman, and so is her opponent, Victoria Sokolova. Absolutely a fantastic to see this duo going up against one another one on one. Gonna go for for the cover after a success. Well, how successful Meteora kick out at two. Still a long way to go to get that free count, but. Selena Bochamp not about to give up. Goes for the famous sir. Here she comes. And now thinking this match is over. She's really trying to end this match real quick here. Two count and shoulder up. Victoria Sokolova powering through even though getting hit with the famous sir. The French brawler Selena. That's right she is French. She has to kick it up a whole another notch as she's gonna go from the top rope now. Dives in with the famous or gets caught in a power bomb. Ali Oop face buster. Victoria Sokolova getting hold and getting the situation turned around. DDT drops down the champion. She was so certain of her position there. Now it has been taken out of her crafts here. Victoria Sokolova lifting her up with a single leg. Goes for a ballerina kick into the cover now. Here we go. One rope break. I don't, I honestly do not know how in the world Selena was able to turn herself like that, like grasp a rope, but hey, I suppose that that's the mystery, that's the mystique of the martial artists. I mean, who knows how fast, how much they're fighting, how fast they're fighting. We could only be seeing a fraction of the true action they're doing. Sunset split into the cover, two count, and pushing off the challenger. Real cl close to there to a three count, but 
able to avoid the fall so far, missing the springboard, Selina Bochamp getting hold of the arm, goes for the cross, misses the stomp there, locked up here, snapmare takedown, Victoria Sokolova from the ropes, big boot to the face, setting up the arm here, drops down the knee right onto it, setting up now, drop kick to the back, as Selina is well, she's definitely getting a championship fight worthy of losing to the, the challenger, definitely making it. Oh, beautiful flight there, elbow dive to the back, rolls up and hooks up with the leg. Here we go for the cover, Victoria Sokolova, two count kick out. Yeah, uh, Selena definitely getting her money's worth tonight. She's always wanting a more and more challenging opponent, so, uh, constantly wanting championship matches tonight. She is getting everything she could want more and more, it seems. Hopefully she just hasn't been enough more than she, she can chew right here. Well, it's not, not like it was an option of hers. But then again, she did have the choice. She did have the advantage of choosing this match stipulation. I'm wa wanting a regular match. Regular one fall match. Back up to her feet. Comes in. Takes down with a close line. Climbs to the top. Selena looking for a big maneuver. Here comes in. Diving in. Meteora. Off the top rope. Not done yet, gonna look for another big five line maneuver here. Gesturing at Victoria to get back up to her feet, but she's gonna come crashing down hard enough, missing the Meteora this time. Victoria catching the legs, no gets countered, pushed off by the champion. Picking up here. Gonna go, oh, gets pushed off there, missing the single leg drop kick. Selena keeping her car up, beautiful sleeper match slam. Coming in, top rope, moonsault. Selena showing how it's done, and I don't know what the hell that was. Yeah, once again, you never know in mar with martial artists how fast they're acting. How if the naked eye can even see that coming in with the diving famous her off the top rope into the cover. The champion gonna be retaining after all two no shoulder up Victoria Sokolova, <laughs> and yeah frustration building up on Selena Bochamp right now, and I gotta blame her. I would have wagered that would have been it. Top rope, moonsault again. Springboard action, definitely working out a lot better for Selena than it did for Victoria. As she's putting up more and more pressure here, gets a kick to the face there. Coming in, oh, <laughs> just tosses off and kicks the challenger to the face. Hamstring crusher. And now setting up a submission hold, could not be relying. Look at this, beautiful in the verdict. Uh, is it this a sharpshooter? Gonna try to force a tap out here. Look at it. You can only imagine the pain. No, she lets her go. Interesting choice there, but she almost at her. She very well almost at her. Gonna go for a famous her instead. Drops that leg right to the back of the head and goes for the cover. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Rope break. Referee does not see. Referee does not see. Selena Bota gets a victory. What a, what a disappointing, honestly, honestly saying a disappointing conclusion to otherwise a main event caliber match up here. That was real unfortunate there for Victoria Sokolova, but all the more better for Selena Bochamp. Let's get an update on the scoreboard situation here. With that, Selena Bochamp takes the number one position with 16 victory points in the season. Now it all comes down to the next two matches, whether, whether or not, actually, it, it's not gonna come down to even that. It depends on the one final match, the, uh, or rather the second final match, between Sweet Marie and Aunt Teresa, whether it's gonna be Sweet Marie or Selena Bochamp entering the main event tonight. Nonetheless, we still have the Women's rated R championship title uh, coming, so let, let's get that done and let, let's see just what's gonna come. Yeah, you heard it right, like I said. Next up, we have the women's rated R championship match. Katio the Elizabeth as the number one contender representing the two cool team and the defending champion Black Rose Julia. Now Julia, of course, has once again chosen as the match stipulation, the extreme submission match. The following contest 
is an Extreme Rules match and is for the Women's Rated R Championship. It's already be a huge night for the team of Too Cool as Snow Princess Yuri and Diane Van Damme were able to secure themselves the Women's Wrestling Alliance Championship titles or should I give credit, more, more specifically give credit where it's due Diane Van Damme was able to outlast everyone else and secure the titles for the team Now I've got your Elizabeth stands as the sole competitor, the number one competitor for the Women's Rated R title we, we could be seeing triple champions out here tonight, depending on how the match is gonna go. Extreme submission match. A match, up, a match stipulation dreamed up by Black Rose Julia, but honestly with the trump card, Elis Elizabeth's trump card, the Kerry Fuda driver, she stands at a good uh, opportunity to actually defeat Julia here. And here comes the champion. Ever so glorious, ever so magnificent, and ever so diabolical Black Rose Julia. Yeah, she was part of the season championship race, but unfortunately for her, due to Selena Bojan winning her championship match right before this, she, honestly speaking, cannot earn enough victory points here tonight. To be to even go and try and challenge Cutie by Cook for the season championship. Nonetheless, she still remains determined that, that she will retain her rated R title, and able to make Katsuyori uh, uh, Elizabeth tap out here tonight. The fans are definitely cheering, and for a good reason, they love seeing Julia in action. She she knows. How, how to bloom like a flower. Introducing the challenger from the land of the rising sun, the samurai Katsuyori Elizabeth. And introducing the champion from Accra, Ghana. She is the women's rated R champion, Black Rose Julia. All right, and let's see rated R title of the highly contested titles, and evidently something that uh, puts you on top of everyone else. As I've said it before, only a few people are daring enough to uh, uh, go for this title. And especially with a champion like Black Rose Julia, many of the women have gone out of the competition, not, not wanting to risk an uh, injury, but here we go. Let's see how these two extreme women, very extreme women are gonna be dealing tonight. Sin Breaker already to the challenger. Now extreme submission rules are are just a unification. Oh, already starting up with the entwining rose here. Oh, this match we could have a champion retaining in record time here if she's able to put on more pressure here. No, El Elizabeth able to roll up, get the leverage on her side and with the elbows escape. Yeah, already going for the entwining rose. Uh, either Julia is hoping for a quick victory or she has. Something more planned up in her sleeves tonight. Let's see. Stomp to the arm there. Trying to pick up, but the champion. Oh, gets countered. Elizabeth still keeping on lifting up. Fall away. Oh no, Samoan's drop. No, a Samoan slam. Samoan driver. I'm 100% sure. It's not drop, it's one of the other. Yeah, uh, anyway, what I was explaining. The extreme submission rules, it's a fusion of extreme rules and uh, submission rules. So extreme rules applying, there are no disqualification, weapons are allowed. But the only way to win the match is by a submission halt. And here we have locking up a hammer lock. Katsuri Elizabeth, oh, Julia rolling out of it. 
very easily. Didn't it even look like she was locked up at all. Sending the champion into the corner. Here comes the samurai. Chopping across the chest and now shoulder thrusting in the corner. But don't yet club, the heavy club to the back. You could hear the aim right there. Gonna be setting up a wheelbarrow. Ooh, beautiful, beautiful German suplex. Well, not a German suplex. Wheelbarrow back suplex drop. Setting up hairpool mat slam here. Elizabeth now shimming around. I don't know what she's doing. Doing a bit of dance movie with her feet there or something. Trying to set up. Ooh, there we go. The karate chop to the top of the head. The champion is down and Elizabeth looking for a big maneuver here from the top rope. Does it go for the Kiri Fura driver just yet? Bro, <laughs> see the round center. See that center. Rolling see that center. At that gets the leg picked off there. Julia rolls outside escaping the carnets and goes for a looking for an equalizer. She's got a sledgehammer, but Katya Elizabeth not about to let her use it. Picks it up herself, though, and goes to down. Dropping the hammer straight onto Julia. She's able to roll through. Gets back up to her feet. Puts on a leg. Rolling le leg snap. And now looking to finish, finish off Elizabeth. She can, she can do whatever she wants, but the match has to end inside the ring here. Lifting her up. Wait a minute. That's Kiri Fuda driver. Elizabeth's very own submission hold being used up against her and I'm pretty sure Julia even though she's not the master of it I'm pretty sure that those forms of hers are definitely adding some extra damage that Elizabeth could not even hope of adding Getting the sledgehammer now dropping it to the top of the head there another drop and another one just hammering away at her opponent and trying to make sure that she's not able to fight here making her way back into the ring Elizabeth Coming in, gets caught immediately, lifted up. What is she gonna go? Gonna go for a backpack stunner. Very uh, interesting variation, but hey, whatever works. Black Rose now waiting for the opportunity to come striking, and looks like she's gonna do just that. Locks up both of the legs here. What is she? Oh, this is an interesting one. A new finishing maneuver, it seems. She calls this the Flower of victory. Very interesting, definitely, as the legs are strained here. No, lets her go, uh, takes her out of it. Suppose she knew that she should not. She needs to still get, get, get a bit more training with that one if she's ho hoping to earn a victory with that. But uh, already getting, getting a good, good variation. Drops the knee. I mean, if there's ever a time to test out a new. Uh, uh, move and see how efficient it is it is during a match like this especially when everyone is watching super kick barely faced julia but the back suplex drop definitely did stomp to the face server scotty elizabeth now looking for another karate chop looking to put julia down permanently kick to the mid section hooks her up and gonna go for her trump card Locking in the Kiwi Fuda driver was a bit a bit slow on there. Took a, took a bit longer than she wanted and let's see whether or not Julia she's trying to pick the arm there, unable to do so. No, she gets pushed off. Gatiori Elizabeth letting her go on her own free will instead. Climbs outside of the ring and looking for a weapon here. She's had a baseball bat. Missing. Missing it again. I don't know. Yeah, maybe she should have gone for a kendo stick instead. Julia drops her down, chops across the chest. Gets him from behind, gonna go for a queen suplex here. Impressive drop right there. And now gonna lock up the legs again. Once again, the flower of victory about to bloom. Yeah, you can see. Oh, and yeah, she taps out with her head. She had no other way out of that one. Black Rose Julia earning the victory and retaining the title tonight. So the replays of the action here. Katiori Elizabeth definitely giving her best, but despite that, the true champion of the extreme submission rules still retain their title. 
Yeah, that was absolutely a tormenting hold right there. Here is your winner, and still women's rated R champion, Black Rose Julia. Well, she might be, not be competing for the season championship anymore, but at the very least, she stands tall as the women's rated R champion, and there's no one who can take that away from her. Next up, it's the moment of truth. This, this match will determine is it gonna be Selena Bojamp or Sweet Marie who will be challenging Cutie by Cook season championship. This will be determined in the women's internet championship title match as we have the two top uh, names in that division on Teresa, the previous champion, and Sweet Marie. The defending champion has chosen tonight a tables, ladders and chairs match to defend her title. The following contest is a tables, ladders and chairs match and is for the Women's Internet Championship. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The moment of truth is upon us as we have our final championship title match before our main event tonight. The season championship about to commence right after this one. But first, we have the women's internet championship title match and Peggy Barney, this two of the very toughest in the division, on Teresa, the challenger holding the title previously herself before losing it to the current champion but now tonight with an opportunity to earn it back not just earn it back but also uh, deny the champion the opportunity to go after the season championship go after cutie by cook and instead that honor will, would be given to selena bojan but that all hinges on the matter whether or not on teresa can defeat sweet marie here tonight she lost to her previously in a ladder match, but maybe the TLC variation will be more on her side tonight, as it's definitely more chaotic. And again, it's exactly what the champion wanted. She wanted more, more action and more thrill in this fight. And very soon, in considering this is the final show of the season, so let's see. Here comes the defending champion, the hometown girl, Selena, uh, Selena, Sweet Marie. I'm, I'm already thinking about potential, the potential fi final event here, so... But we, I still have to get through this match. Sweet Marie, very powerful, very devastating high flyer who has definitely proven herself to be championship material. And un honestly, the, well, this is her moment. Make her break. This will determine whether or not she'll, she'll be getting into that season championship position. And she, she still looks as ador adorable as ever. But ador adorability is one thing. Proving, her, proving herself to be a champion is another. And here we go for the one final time. The season 4 internet championship title on the line here. The challenger on Teresa, the champion Sweet Marie, bell has rung and this TLC, tables, ladders and chairs match is on. This duo has fought previously for the title multiple times now already, so gonna be real excited to see which one of them will be coming on top of tonight. They, they bo definitely both know uh, each other's stars. It, it honestly comes down to who makes the first mistake and who keeps on making mistakes. Able to push off Teresa after she came butting the head or smashing the head against the mat there. Setting up her, lifting up, waist lock, power bomb. Oh, Teresa takes the opportunity, rushes outside and really makes a beeline for that ladder. Push, putting it inside the ring. Here comes Marie sliding out or oh, trying to go for a baseball slide. Missing, both of them missing with their jump maneuvers. Well, oh, Teresa with a springboard attack on. 
Teresa now missing or unable to catch hold of Marie as he drops her down. Yeah, Aunt Teresa might just be looking for a cheeky win, you know. Uh, screw the champion and just get get the match done as soon as possible. Marie rolls outside though. She wants to introduce something a bit more fun into this match and she's ha ha doing that with a steel chair gets caught with a jawbreaker though. The audience is wanting tables, but I don't know whether or not this duo is willing to put uh, give the audience what they want. Another waist lock power bomb from Aunt Teresa. She's setting herself up in the corner, waiting for Marie to get back up to her feet, sending her outside, drop kicking her out. Like you're land hard, uh, landing hard. Yeah, once again, just standing there in the corner. I don't know what she's planning there, but it, it's not doing anything. Oh, missing the head, but there. Marie rolls outside, so does Teresa, looking for a weapon, but Teresa catching her elbow to the face. Yeah, she is very, very eerily looking at the champion right now, setting up here, straight jacket neck breaker. Yeah, speaking of straight jacket, I believe that old Teresa should definitely be in one herself. Going catching around, going for kicks and attacks here at the champion. Sending uh, the challenger into the steel ladder. Face first. Finding herself yet another ladder. Marie sends it into the ring here. Gets caught by Teresa sending her in turn against the uh, steel ladder. Yeah, talk, about, talk about giving a payback for it's too. Bomb striking Marie against the security barrier here. Sr striking her one more time and with that. No, no, does it do anything with that? Goes for a kick here. Setting up another straight jacket neck breaker. Is he trying to make that into a signature of hers? Yeah, if she is, that's definitely working out for her. Sending her across the ringside. The champion trying to get her reach here. Gets punched to the back of the head. Trying to rush at the challenger. Who now takes the opportunity. Smashing the champion against the apron. Gonna go. Oh, gonna go for a bite. Gonna, gonna get a bit of a taste out of Marie. Let's see whether or not she's actually sweet after all. Jawbreaker drops her down. Be light up here. Elbow to the face. The champion still climbing back up. But Aunt Teresa not wanting. Oh, gets leg caught. That will definitely catch her attention. And this one will more so. Sling so that trying to grasp her again. But yeah, this time not giving her the time of the day. Jumping back inside. Here comes Marie. Single leg drop kick. I don't know what the hell happened to the ladder there. Why it went for a spin there. Oh no. Jumping bulldog. Landed straight onto that steel chair. Poor positioning. Well I would say for, for the champion that was excellent positioning. But a still poor positioning for the challenger. Marie setting up the ladder in the center of the ring here. Comes around. Takes her down. I know what that was. I mean, it was a rolling clothesline, obviously, but I don't I know what, what, what that was for. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Lifting up for a suplex, but Teresa goes for a German of her own, able to escape Marie's hold. With that, she climbs to the top of the ladder and now looking for uh, the opportunity to press the titles. Or the title, I'm sorry, there's only singular title available here. Marie punching her to the gut there, making her drop down to her level. Gets an elbow to the face there from Aunt Teresa. Chop misses. The duo still continue on their fight on the top of the ladder to try to... Try to get... Sorry. Try to get the other person to fall first. Another reversal. Real high risk place there. This could cause serious damage if either of them falls down. And sweet Marie just did Aunt Teresa. Takes the opportunity and starts working on the title. Eight hooks on that when she has unhooked them all. And the title is free. She, she is claimed the champion. Marie collapsing the ladder underneath her. Power bombs her down. And with that the champion now ready to continue on with her domination. Smacking the challenger with the steel ladder. Sweet Marie setting up the ladder in the center of the ring. Climbs to the top of it. Gonna reach for the title herself now, nah, but better watch out. Aunt Teresa back in action and back, uh, quite literally on the back of her, striking at the legs, trying to make her fall down. 
And she's gonna do just that. Lines up a power bomb. The talenter now climbing to the top rope here. Comes in diving with the leg drop. Oh, I believe that was it. That was definitely the last call she needed. Teresa picks up the ladder to set it up in another position. Interesting choice there, but I suppose Marie was bit in the way there. Ready for now, opportunity to reach for the title, take a bit too long there, wait, just waiting around, not doing anything. As the champion is back on her feet and back in attack, attacking on Teresa from behind. I don't know what the hell happened to the rope there. Is that thing on a bungee cord or something? I don't know, Marie is circling around, doing absolutely nothing about climbing the ladder. On Teresa climbing up, climbs down, gets caught by the champion, back suplex. And with that, Marie now gets the steel chair. I don't know what she's planning with it, but it cannot be... Oh, more driving it to the head of Aunt Teresa, making her fall down as she was trying to climb up to safety. Gonna go for the best press. Aunt Teresa drops down Marie. And now just moonwalking. Is this really the time? I'm oh, gonna go for the chair instead. Smacking across the head to the knee. Missing this time. Trying to come around, but not enough there. As Murray now somersault, reverse DDT, and landing straight on that steel chair. Oh, that's a good night on Teresa. Good, well fought, but unfortunately, and I don't know what Marie is doing, but she's trying to really just. What is she doing? She's just taking the ladder constantly and trying to readjust it m multiple times. I don't know. She was wasting time right there. I suppose she wants to keep on fighting. On Teresa, however, does not want to keep fighting. She wants to finish this off. TKO. Climbing to the top. Very top of the ladder here. On Teresa, about to high fly. Dives in with the elbow, driving it straight to the back. Climbs to the top rope now. Dives in with the leg drop, misses that one on Teresa. Unable to catch Marie as she's reaching for the top, reaching for the title again. But she did not take care of her challenger instead, who's gonna be striking her behind. And once again, that, that title must be on some kind of a bungee cord. I've never seen it. I, I mean, I've seen it one or two times act like that. But this is just something else altogether. On Teresa now climbs again to the top of the ladder. Gonna jump down. Frog blast. Yeah, the champion got knocked out with that. Not done yet, she's gonna look for one more big move. Audience is chanting, this is awesome. She actually did hit, just barely able to hit with that leg drop of hers. And with that, on Teresa now, they goes for the title. She has plenty of time to secure it. Doesn't need to really worry about rushing it anyway. We have one, we have two, one more, and it's all hers. The championship title, all hers. She's fumbling around though. Marie getting back up to her feet, but it's too late on Teresa. Securing the season, uh, the internet championship, and the season championship as fast is no longer a possibility for Sweet Marie. Huge victory for Teresa, once more claiming that internet championship title. And with this victory, she also becomes the undisputed women's internet champion. So, yeah, congratulations to her. Anyway, we still have one more match coming up. The biggest match of them all, a perfect send-off. The final match of season four. Let's get to it. The main event of tonight, the final match of Season 4 of Brawl Masters is about to commence with the ultimate title on the line here, the Season Championship. Our previous Season Champion, Cutie by Cook, of course, uh, in a, a position to potentially lose that title. His challenger, the current number one ranking brawler, Selena Bocha, has the opportunity to earn that title. We'll take a bit moment here to sort out the details of what kind of a matchup we have. Our choices are either 
a mixed gender tag team match or a one on one fight where someone represents PewDiePie cool. But before we get to that, we, we promised a huge announcement and we're gonna get to that. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, we are almost ready to be kicking off our main event of the night, the final fight of season 4 of Pro Masters. And here comes the man defending his pride, defending his season championship title, the season 3 champion, Cutie by Cook. Absolutely fantastic to see him here uh, at the pinnacle of it all. Title up brightly. We're moments away from seeing whether or not he's gonna be keeping that title or will it be going to someone else tonight? Well, someone else, the number one challenger being Selena Bochamp. So let's see. Surprise you fools, it's me, your host and play-by-play -play commentator Kupari Parta is here. And no, don't worry, don't worry, I'm not actually taking part in this match. I just wanted to come out here I give my records. All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, once again, it is I, Kupari Partan, right there in the corner, we have our season 3 champion waiting for the main event, but before that, I promised you all a huge announcement here, and that's exactly what I'm gonna be giving to you right now, so, uh, th this is gonna be... Uh, for some, this is gonna definitely come out as a surprise, but for those of you who have been keeping an eye on the detail, who have been listening very closely, you can already guess, or have a suspicion of what I'm about to say here. Now, it's our 118th episode of the Pro Masters here. We've been doing this now for over a year, and we are at the end of Season 4, and with that also, we are at the end of the Pro Masters as a series. Now I understand this might come as a bit of a confusion, considering how I've always been like, oh, I love making this show, I love producing this type of content, and all the stories that are still remain to be untold in the squared circle right here. Like, what's gonna happen next? There, there are still championship claims happening, there are still rivalries that are yet un unsettled. What, what about those? Why, why, why just give up on those? Well, if, if you remember from the summer brawl, I was talking about uh, Brawl Masters going through a rebranding. So, yes, you can, <laughs> yeah, with that you should be able, already be able to put a piece this together. So, this is the end of a series, but not the end of the event. This is, this, is, this is not the end of the stories here. Instead, we're gonna be going for a new, completely different, well, I suppose different, more, more of a professional way here. Pro Masters has done its job. It has set us up for, uh, in a position where we want to be. We have a beautiful roster of, of amazing talent, both in the men's and the women's division, as we have not only the season champion here with us, the season, uh, the person who's currently ranked as the number one here in the fourth season, and who was the runner-up in the third season, but also a lot of people in their backstage, a lot of people who have both fought today, as well as been, fought, been fighting hard in the past three months, and not, not just three months, but the entire time that the Pro Masters 
have been running through, but this has all been just to set up for the next evolution in e-wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, put your attention to the following trailer we have put together for our new wrestling series. So please enjoy. Yeah, that's that's a that's it. Tonight show break Pro Masters breakthrough is the final Pro Masters and with that we're gonna transition into breakthrough championship wrestling. Not only do we have that coming up, we uh, not only is the series getting a total makeover, we're, we're gonna, gonna have an organizing uh, changes as well. For example, uh, most notably and most importantly the show will no longer be pro uh, broadcasted and released on youtube.com slash at instead we will now have a dedicated wrestling channel just for that it's gonna be well just as the name says bcw breakthrough championship wrestling and it's available at youtube.com slash at Breakproof Wrestling. Uh, all the fans of Brawlmasters, there are plenty of you. Uh, a pretty good group already. If, if you wanna keep on experiencing what we have built here, if you wanna keep on experiencing the wrestling action we have been building up, I highly suggest you go there right now, hit that subscribe button, and be part of the weekly program that we're gonna continue giving to you. However, there's also going to be changes in the uh, release of the episodes. There's still going to be two episodes per week, but instead of Thursdays and Sundays, the episodes are now going to be released on Wednesdays and Saturdays. We're uh, not sure about the time yet, but that also most likely will, will have, have to... The episodes will be released a bit earlier on than, than the current Pro Masters episodes have been, just for the sake of it, it them being more manageable the production crew there there are plenty more to talk about plenty more changes that's gonna be happening in the breakthrough championship wrestling but we, we can talk about those in, in the actual show for now though it is time for our main event here in the brawl masters uh, the final episode of brawl masters the season four championship match here taking part in this, well, we have already one contender here, Cutie Pie Cook, waiting very eagerly to get started. So let's get the rest of the people right here, right now. 
following contest, ladies and gentlemen. It's a mixed gender tag team match, and it's for the season four championship title. Cutie by Coop, the defended champion, already in the ring waiting. And here comes his chosen partner for this the spectacular, the wondrous submission magician, Magic Maggie. With that, you can already guess. Well, you already know who's gonna be the pair up facing up against Alvana Natural. We're gonna get here in our main event a rematch between Magic Maggie and Selena Bochamp to once and for all determine which one of them will be the tougher one. Beautify Cook really facing, placing a lot of trust in Magic Maggie, and for a good reason, too. I mean, season one and two champion teaming up with season three champion. This is absolutely fantastic. It sounds like the party is about to get wild here. Returning to the arena, we have the men's internet champion, the men's undisputed internet champion, the disco warrior Henry Louis Marceau, being chosen as the tag team partner for Selena Bochamp, and for a good reason too, you know, these two have tag team previously, so they, they know each other and they, they know their chemistry. Be part of the previously part of the phenomenal flair team. The duo made great impact in the mixed gender tag team division. Now the duo is back and now hoping to defeat the season championship pair. Season season champions pair. I'm so excited to see what will come out of this. No more victory points available. But still, Henry cannot be resting. Yes, I'm pretty uh, plenty sure that Selena is trusting him to take down Cutie by Cook. And ladies and gentlemen, introducing the undisputed women's martial arts champion and the number one brawler of season four, Selena Bowl Champ. Once more into the fray she goes, looking to earn that season championship title. Let's see whether or not she'll still be able to get that. Yes, yeah, she's going up against Magic Maggie. She did manage to defeat Magic Maggie earlier on in a non title well, it was a title match. Hang on, am I misremembering this? It wasn't a title match if Selena won. No, Magic Maggie won that fight. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing it. I'm re a great finish all the way to the end here. Yeah, Magic Ma Maggie defeated Selena Bochamp previously, but now she has the opportunity to even out the score. And not only that, but claim herself as the season champion. Alright, and we have the men starting out in our main event of the night and the final fight of season four of Brawl Masters all together I hope ladies and gentlemen you've had just as wild as an experience as I've had bringing all these episodes to you and I'm ho hoping for many more such experiences when we get to breakthrough championship wrestling but for now let us enjoy the final show of the Brawl Masters Attack has been made by Henry Louis Marceau, meaning it's time for the women to get into the ring. The submission magician versus Selena Bochamp, and Selena immediately gets ejected out of the ring. Now, of course, Maggie has the Maggie and Cutie Pie definitely have the advantage here, in, in the sense that they are fresh brawlers. They have not had to fight tonight, as of yet. Meanwhile, Selena and Henry both have championship title defenses already behind them. Match could definitely end out in a count out, so be wary of that as well. Maggie dropping her with Selena with a DDT catching hold, sending her into the steel steps. Heavy impact right there. Five. Referee getting up to a five count, and Maggie deciding this is the perfect opportunity to get back Seven. inside the ring here. He giving the fans, well, the fans not cheering for her as much as they're cheering for Selena. Running Bulldog drops down. Magic Maggie. 
Uh, honestly, I could have imagined a better, well, I could have imagined a better, better main event as we, we would have, could have had Selena and Cutie by Cook going one on one, but unfortunately, due to the corporate rules, we, we are una not allowed to have a man fighting against a woman who's more than capable of ki uh, uh, kicking the crap out of him. Yeah, I'm still I'm still not okay with that, and I'll never be okay with that tag has been made. You know, professional wrestling belongs to everyone. It should belong to everyone. And it should be all-inclusive. So I do that. Yeah, I'll, I'll just shut up about that. This is a time of joy, of celebration. Henry coming in, face-busting the knee. Face-busting Cutie face with the knee, setting up here. Gonna go for a neck-breaker. Lining up here, elbow to the chest. And leg drop missing. Pewdiepie able to get back on. Kick to the leg there. And sending Henry into the corner now. Gonna come in with a kick, gets countered. Elbow to the face there. And I don't know what Selena's doing. She's doing some kind of a workout uh, for some reason at this time. Sending Pewdiepie against Maggie, who ducks out of the way. Shoulder tackle. And now gonna line up. Powerful sunset flip power bomb from the apron. Fight is continuing on on the right side of the ring here. The crowd is going wild for Henry as Cutie by Cook is staying, being taken out. Crossing against one another. Oh, what a strike! Sending Cutie by once again straight into the steel steps. Or was it the first time? That was the first time. It was Selena who get, got the steps first. Coming into back inside to the ring. And now challenging both PewDiePie and Maggie to come after him. Ooh, what a chop. PewDiePie back inside the ring but gets caught. Leg sweep. The Disco Warriors leg drop coming in. Into the cover now. Henry Louis Marceau. Hoping for a victory for Selena. Lines up another leg drop. Missing. Pewdiepie back on top of things, able to get sold, goes for a heavy strike to the face, and with that makes a back to Magic Maggie, season 1 and 2 champion, the submission magician, going up against Selena Bochamp now, hair whip though, Selena able to take control of the situation, who's now trying to shimmy her way back into the corner, Maggie with a jawbreaker, not allowing her to make the tag, setting up here, side suplex, no, Selena landing on her feet, very graceful indeed, STO leg sweep and Magic Maggie has been taken down with that Selena makes attack definitely aged that Henry and Selena already have plenty of tag teaming experience with one another definitely could help Selena get, get the victory here but let's see Cutie still has pl plenty to give a note about it Magic Maggie as well kick to the gut DDT planting Henry straight to the canvas there picks him up again Kick to the gut from Henry, comes in, missing the elbow, missing the leg sweep, and getting caught now by Henry. Setting up, side leg sweep. Henry going for the cover, hoping to get the victory. We have one, we have two count, we have three, kick out. We have a kick out. Judith by Cook still holding on, but at the pacing of this battle, he's not going to be holding on for too long. Let's see, Henry going for the tag, tagging in Selena Bochamp. This French pair definitely know what it, what it means to be part of a tag team. Sending Magic Maggie outside of the ring. And here comes Selena herself following in pursuit. Crossing the arm. Looks up the head going for punches. More punches and now stomps. Cutie by Cook still is down and out. As the women are continuing their fight, beautiful Northern Lights bomb from Maggie. Picking up Selena, who scoops her down with the leg. Spin, spun around, sent into the security barrier. Selena gets back inside the ring. Maggie getting back up to her feet and getting back inside the ring. Oh, what a elbow, straight to the face. Tag has been made once again by this French pair of brawlers. Oh, Cutie Pie ducking out of the way, gets caught with the kick, last shot, center of the ring, shoulders are down, and Henry looking to get the victory, we have two and a kick out, Maggie too slow to get, get at Henry, but 
Arm ringer takedown. Crowd is chanting, that's impressive. No, they're uh, chanting tag team wrestling. I'm sorry I misheard that. It's hard, oh, sometimes hard to tell, tell what the crowd is thinking or saying. Magic Maggie catching hold of the head. Look at this power. Just throwing Selena across. No problem whatsoever. Picks her up again. Trying to go for that Black Widow hope. Gets countered with a kick. And now Hairpool Matt Slam takes her down. Selena picks her up to her feet. Pat says hold and trying to drag her to the corner, maybe. Yes, there she goes in the corner, gets caught. Magic Maggie turning her over, pulling on the arm now, stretching it across the top rope. Nasty pull right there. Maggie knee lift and making Henry duck out of the way as she locks up the tarantula hold here. Yeah, that's just Ma Maggie being Maggie for you. Selena being taken out and now Cutie by Coot tagged in. The season champion going up against the Disco Warrior, locking him up. Gonna go for that rolling on prettier. There it goes. Here he's going for the cover. We have one, we have two count and shoulder up. With that goes, goes around and goes to the tag. Magic Maggie now tagged in. Once again the women going head to head. Knee lift. Hiptos from Selena. Trying to climb the, trying to get to the uh, corner, but not quite there yet. Double knee face breaker. And from there goes to the top rope. Gonna look for a big maneuver here. Gesturing at Maggie to get up. She better watch out though as she's gonna meeting up. Oh, never mind. Catching Selena. Very awkward position, but able to go for the power bomb. And with that, Maggie in position to end this fight right here and now. Here she comes. This is the move that made her famous to begin with. Eerily approaching her opponent. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready as Magic Maggie goes for the curtain call. Hooks up the leg, goes for the cover. Magic Maggie hoping to defeat Selena Bota one more time. Referee with a really slow count there. Allowing Selena to kick out. Kick to the leg there from Selena and a jawbreaker. Drops down Magic Maggie and with that gonna go for a springboard moonsault. Takes down Maggie again as she was trying to make her way back up to her feet. Look up the head going for punches to the side of the head. Selena taking out Maggie very efficiently. Still being caught in that curtain call. Definitely slowed her down very, very much so. Sending Maggie into the corner here. Pulls on the arm, giving Maggie a taste of her own attack. Still trapped in the French spare corner. We're gonna get some tag team action after all. Selena Bochamp and Magic Maggie, Henry Louis Marceau and Cutie Pie Cook. Look, both of them locking the heads. Double DDT. Into the cover now. We have one. We have two count and kick out. Selena sending Maggie outside. Cutie Pie left all alone. And there comes the Disco Warriors leg drop again. Drop in like a guillotine. Oh, gets caught. I don't know what he was gonna go for, but... Well, probably for the last shot. And now, Cutie by Cook looking for a triangle hold here. Locking up the ties right onto the legs around the Disco Warrior. He's trying to pull it up. He's getting back up to his feet now. Punching Cutie Pie. Figured he would try to go for a power bomb, but no, instead. Just liberates himself. Sending Henry to the <laughs> Selena there. Kick to the gut there. Head scissors, TDT. The Femboy Killer Fies have connected. Into the cover now. We have one, we have two, and shoulder up. And Henry Louis Marceau has been busted open once more. Tag has been made. Magic Maggie has been tagged in. Selena Bojamp has to join the fight. Thanks to the corporate ruling. Maggie sent outside. Selena. Not sure what she's planning. Looking for a big maneuver potentially here. As she climbs to the top rope. Ready for Maggie to get back up to her feet here. And comes in diving with Meteora. Oh, that was a poor mistake. Hitting both those knees right to the floor there. And Maggie now holding the leg. Gets an insecurity. Both women back in there. Oh, what a knee lift to the face. Both women back up to their feet. Maggie gets countered. 
Selena Bolton locking up here. Suplex. Dropping down the submission magician again. Kick to the leg. So you're halfway through the count there as the two are getting closer and closer to the aisle. Further away from the ring here. It would be a real shame for this match to end in a count out. Up to a seven count. Selena rushes into the ring. Maggie trying to get her her wits. She better hurry up though. We are up to an eight count. There she goes. Rushes back. No rush. Yeah, there she goes. They get break. Springboard misses. Magic Maggie. Hercule match slam. And with that takes the, takes the tag. Judy by Cook and Henry Louis Marceau again. Cutie Pie just running straight into that boot. Lifted up here. Drop down to the top rope. Henry keeping up with the attacks here. Crossing the arm. And lining up. Sliding elbow tackle to the chest. Uh, this match has been going absolutely electric. And it could honestly go either way. Henry and Selena had, had an early lead on here. But uh, both Cutie Pie and Magic Maggie have been able to turn things around for themselves. And... Close up that gap. However, Henry is still mostly dictating the pacing of the fight here. Tracking out Cutie Pie away from the ropes and looking for one more time with the leg drop. Picks up Cutie Pie and drop kicking him down. Going for the cover here. This could be it. Magic Maggie coming to save Cutie Pie Cook from the fall. Stomping to the face, Vela, Vela pinfall didn't work, but maybe a submission, never mind. Dragon screw reversal from Cutie Pie, who takes the opportunity to go for the tag. Definitely what he needed, he couldn't last, outlast K, uh, Henry like that. Maggie definitely, however, can outlast Selena, especially in this. Her signature maneuver, the Black Widow hold, fully wrapping herself around Selena, but... Does it look like Selena is in any jeopardy? Instead, gonna be hang, ha, hanging over strong. Drop toe hold. Takes it on Magic Maggie. Catching hold of the submission matches and her trick did not work out for her. Let's see if she's able to escape this. No, gets her arm pulled. Once again, straight over the top rope. Turning her around. What is Selena thinking here? Smashing the head against the turnbuckle. And now stomping right onto the torso there. Absolutely relentless Selena taking control of the situation. Once and again. Once and again. Once more and again. Vertical suplex center of the ring here. Perfect opportunity but goes for the tag. Selena Bochamp tagging in Henry Louis Marceau. And once again Cutie Pie just rushing straight at Henry. Henry turning that into a power slam in turn. Henry climbing to the top rope, looking for high flying maneuver here. Comes in diving with the elbow, hitting Cutie Pie into the back. Rolls him up and goes for the cover, hooking up the leg here. There we go for the cover. We have two and break up there. Magic Maggie just at the nick of time was able to save Cutie Pie, was able to save this matchup. The season champion still holding true and strong to get her tag has been made. The women's turn once for Magic Maggie and Selena Bochamp. Magic Maggie gets hip tossed again. Despite her reverse attack and now getting be lifted up. Oh, never mind. Power slam reversal from Magic Maggie. I don't know what Selena was going for, but that did not work out for her. Getting stomped to the face there and Maggie now going for the cover. A, ref, a referee being distracted by Henry entering the ring. I see Maggie trying to go very sneakily. Once more time, one more time with the curtain call. Selena is down. Maggie with the leg. Going for cover. Hoping to earn the victory. No shoulder up. Selena Bochamp. Incredible endurance. Incre the incredible in resiliency. Let's see whether or not she's going to be surviving this one. The Black Widow hold one more time locked in. And Henry coming in to break it up. Or run, run interference or something. It looks like Maggie really just willingly let her go from there. Oh, she's going to go for it one more time. The curtain call about to commence one more time. She's hit already two of those. Let's see if she can manage to hit the third one. Selena still lying down on the crowd. She has no idea what's coming to her. As Maggie gets in the position. The crowd is silent there. Highly anticipated to see what will come. 
There's the final kiss and there's the final curtain call. Maggie going for the cover. This has got to be it. Unless Henry Louis Marceau makes it. Yeah, he makes it and the referee completely sidetracked by that. Gonna go after Cutie by Cook. Never mind, better watch out. Swinging neck breaker. Very beautiful float over neck breaker there from Mag Magic Maggie. But she, she has to uh, get, get careful here and she has to honestly go for attack real soon here. Oh, Selena does that for. No, she's gonna go climb to the top row. Waiting for Maggie to get back up to her feet. She already exhausted herself plenty. Oh, top rope. Famous, sir. Into the cover. We have one. And Cutie Pie Cook give, giving. <laughs> honestly, giving payback to Henry. Selena trying to lock up the submission hold. One more time. Pulling on the leg. Very straining hold here. And once again, Cutie Pie interrupting the thing. Yeah, how does it feel, Henry? I'm pretty sure Cutie Pie must be thinking. Magic Maggie makes a tag. It's all up to Cutie Pie Cook and Henry, Henry Louis Marceau. And Cutie Pie taking the opportunity for a close line. Now gets the leg picked off. Oh, what a delivering the knee to the hamstring there. Climbing to the middle rope here. Henry launches himself. Unable to connect with that. Nobody home. Cutie Pie Cook trying to track Henry against the ropes here. Oh, I believe I know what he's setting up. Once again, the killer femboy fies. DDT planted. Henry is down. Shoulders are down. And Caesar Championship. No, shoulder up. Henry is still fighting through. Magic Maggie running in to take down Selena before she could run interference. We will. We have the rolling on prettier one more time. Into the cover. Cutie by Cook gonna retain. And free. No, Henry again. Absolutely incredible. No one wants to give an inch. No one wants to give a centimeter in our main event here. This is absolutely wild. That these people are still willing to go on. Meteora from top rope. Cutie by launching. And comes crashing down like a star he is. Absolutely wild, absolutely wild main event. Could it actually picture a better send off to the series here? Sit out, Matt Slam. Henry takes down Cutie, <laughs> takes down Cutie by Cook. I'm messing up with my words now. Well, like, what, what else is new? Catching hold and try, trying to drag him into the corner of the French pair. The challengers. Attack has been made. I'm gonna get one more uh, dose of double teaming action. Selena and Henry. Looking up the heads here. And double DDT. Maggie is being pinned here. Let's see. Really slow count from the referee. Is it enough? It is enough. The teamwork makes the dream work. As we have our new season champion, Selena Bochamp. Aided by Henry Louis Marceau in our main event. Absolutely wild. The replays do not pay dividends here, as the matchup was completely something other. Everyone fighting to their fullest, but ultimately this duo gets the win. And with that, Selena Bochamp, the titular champion of season four of Brawl Masters, honestly absolutely amazing. Considering she, she still was the runner-up on season three, now it's her turn to be the champion. Well, that was definitely one hell of a showdown. Thank, uh, yeah. Thank you so much, so, so much for joining the Brawl Masters. This has been one amazing journey. It's not the end of the journey. Instead, we're starting another leg. But as we know it, Brawl Masters has come to a conclusion. I've been your host, Kubari Parta. I hope you enjoyed the matches. And I'll see you next time for BCW Breakthrough. Championship Wrestling Good night